you're just joining us live now, we are looking live outside Rensselaer Field at Pratt & Whitney Stadium at a sea of officers standing by as we watch and wait for the caskets of Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte and Sergeant Alex Hamsey to be brought into the stadium for their joint funeral services to begin. Both hearses are to the left of what you can see in your field of vision, and that is why uh, the members of the Bristol Police Department there have their attention focused that way. Uh, at the doors of at least, the back door of at least one of those hearses was opened about a minute and a half ago, so at least one of the caskets is certainly in the process of being removed right now. It looks, based on how things are going, that the caskets alone will be accompanied down the runway onto the field at Rensselaer Field where the funeral will happen. This is happening right outside uh, that entrance portal right there, just to give you some uh, sense of where this is going on. And this is also the road on which we saw uh, a seemingly endless motorcade of police officers from all around the state, all around the Northeast. Uh, and that is to say nothing of the officers who have come from all over the country. But this was just the motorcycle motorcade that came through. It was uh, impressive to say the least. Jimmy Altman is standing by right there, and we're going to bring him in to give us an additional perspective on the mood and the feeling and just the powerful show of support there as all of those officers are walking in. Jimmy? Erica, it is a poignant moment, not just for today, but in the history of our state, covering the news here. Like we said, we haven't seen something like this. I think the two of you put it so eloquently, elegantly. Um, what adjectives do you use to describe a moment like this as we watch the procession of police officers now heading in to Pratt and Whitney Stadium? We saw that Bristol went in first, following our just numerous departments from all across the state. It appears right now a fire department is going in. We're still about, I'm about 20 yards away, so my vantage point, while it's very good, I can't read what the badges say, but I can say that whatever the badge is today, wherever you're from, everybody's part of the Bristol Police Department. We have seen, as we look at another group, this looks like Plymouth, Massachusetts is walking by us right now. We have seen Ramapo, New Jersey come here. I spoke to an officer who came here from Washington State. I spoke to a police officer who came here from Huntersville, North Carolina. This is all to honor Sergeant Hamsey and Lieutenant DeMonte. This is something that isn't just about Connecticut. This is about our entire state and the support that the Brotherhood of Police and Firefighters and EMTs show for one another. You are seeing that right now. This looks like the state police coming by our cameras right now. And this right now appears to be the last group of police officers, at least for now, headed by our vantage point. We're right by gate B here at Rentschler Field. 
Guys, it has been a very memorable morning here in East Hartford. And uh, for the most part, these pictures, they speak for themselves. We'll send it back to you. Well, Jimmy, what you said was so accurate. If you wear a badge, if you are a first responder, you are part of the Bristol Police Department today. And also, not just in Connecticut, but all over the country, we've seen such an incredible amount of support for the two officers, for the Bristol Police Department, for the entire community. It is amazing. Mm. Now, not a long time ago, we got a copy uh, that the state police sent out of the program for today. There's obviously going to be a lot of speakers here. Uh, there's going to be reflections from uh, Chief Brian Gould. There's going to be at least uh, three speakers for each family, including the Hamsey family. I uh, don't know how uh, the father of Sergeant Alex Hamsey is finding the strength to speak, Ahmad Hamsey. Mm -hmm. He is scheduled to speak, as is Alex's sister and uh, Sergeant uh, Hamsey's father-in-law, Jeff Scott. And Lieutenant DeMonte's family, two friends from DeMonte's family, and also his wife, Laura. And we talk about how people are able to find the strength in a time like yeah. this to speak. And so it's just incredible that we are gonna be hearing from her. Also wanna mention that the officiants of the service are going to be Reverend John Reveal, the chaplain with the Connecticut State Police. Also Reverend Dustin Alley, he's a pastor with the Bristol Police Department in Bristol, Connecticut. And uh, another mm -hmm. touch on the back of the program, first time I've seen this, there's actually a QR code for attendees to scan so that they can donate directly to the family. By the way, mm -hmm. uh, there is Sergeant Hamsey on the left side of yeah. your screen. That's uh, one of the first times we've gotten to see a picture of him smiling. smiling. And yeah. we keep hearing from people who knew him and from his loved ones that his smile would light up the room. Of course, up until this point, all we had was the, you know, his photo from when he was uh, commissioned and he was looking very serious here. But uh, it's so important for us to be able to honor these two officers as more than officers, as husbands, as fathers in the case of yeah. Lieutenant DeMonte, and uh, as people's friends and neighbors. And we've been seeing a lot of pictures of him with his wife, his wife Katie there, and they were just about to celebrate their first anniversary, their first wedding anniversary together. And, and there, saw. right there, we just learned a little while ago, that's the family's beloved dog, Gizmo, and we have been reading some a lot of more a lot more interesting facts about them as people outside of their service, and hearing so many wonderful testimonies from their friends, saying that when Alex walked into the room, he just lit it up with his smile, and yeah. you see that in all of these pictures, and it's just really really wonderful to see. Alex in the past has said that he didn't have any brothers, brothers, but all of his friends, he had mm -hmm. so many, quote, brothers in friends in the community. And, and there he is again with his brother, or right. excuse me, with his dog Gizmo. And of course, so many of the pictures are with his wife. He was just days away from celebrating his first uh, wedding anniversary. You also saw a picture of him there in a Pittsburgh Steelers jersey, which is somewhat interesting because in his obituary, his family said he was a, uh, a Patriots fan, but also a Yankees, Yankees fan, fan right. which was in itself a contradiction. <laughs> And uh, I can only imagine, uh, as a Patriots fan, the back and forth he might have had with Lieutenant DeMonte, who is a known Dolphins fan, a Miami Dolphins fan, so much so that the uh, Miami Dolphins even put up a jersey in Lieutenant DeMonte's honor. And now it's his pictures. You're starting to see uh, mm -hmm. a devoted family man. Uh, and as you can see, this was a, a cake from when he welcomed his daughter, Phoebe. He also has a son, Porter, and then a third uh, child on the on way, the based on a picture that uh, our symphony Privet posted from the memorial outside the Bristol Police Department. Somebody put up three pumpkins in honor of the three DeMonte children, and it said baby girl, mm -hmm. number three on the way. Just even knowing that extra bit of information is extra heartbreaking. Uh, it, it's tough to see, but uh, uh, it, it's good to see these photos, as mm -hmm. hard as they are to look at, because we all need to understand the complete people they were, not just the officers they were who were outside sworn to of protect uniforms. And, serve, yeah. and here's a picture, actually, we've learned that 
DeMonte also leaves behind three Australian Labradoodles whom he adored. Their names Harper, Einstein, and Fozzie. Yeah. DeMonte was a 2005 graduate of Middletown High School. He actually played for the basketball, baseball team there. He was also a member of the band. And this is his wife, Laura, yeah. there. We don't know what's going through their heads right now as, as we're waiting for this uh, funeral to start, but everybody experiences grief differently. And for a lot of people, especially people who have had to go through sudden deaths, they've likened it to being hit by waves, mm -hmm. that it's not necessarily a static grief, that it comes in episodes, a wave that hits you. And at first they come one after the other and they're strong, they're intense, they knock you up and down and feel like they're gonna last forever and have you gasping for breath. But a lot of those survivors say that over time you measure your progress in the grieving by how much time you get in between those waves as they crash over you. Do you have a little more time to right yourself yeah. and get your head above water and take a breath? And here we are nine days removed from the tragedy happening. And all we can hope is that if this is how the Hamzy and the DeMonte families are grieving. We're hoping that we've gotten to the point that there's just enough time in between those waves of grief for them to be able to get up and look around and see what is happening here. We still don't know how filled Rentschler's Field is, but it could be 40 to 50,000 people who are there for them. And I'm hoping that they can see through their grief long enough to be able to see what's happening that the mm -hmm. whole world it feels like is trying to envelop them with their arms and show them the love in a way that is just part of our most basic instinct as a human. Of course, donations are necessary, flowers are important, mm -hmm. but it's just simply being there. Mm -hmm. And so many of these people are not even gonna get within 50 yards of the family, and it doesn't matter. It is just being there in proximity, that human connection, even if nothing else is said. I hope the families are getting some piece of that mm -hmm. today. I yeah. hope that they're that far along in their grieving process to that be able to appreciate it. feel this. the support of the community. And w one thing that Lieutenant DeMonte's family said, that he was so involved in his community that he really worked to help honor local officers who were killed in the line of duty. And no doubt that so many in the community will continue to rally around that family, not just today, not just this week, but for the rest of their lives, those children who won't know their father the way the people in the community do. We heard so many yeah. testimonies from people who say these officers changed their lives, that they credit these officers for saving yeah. their lives, getting them out of scary domestic situations, yep. helping them to become sober and remain yep. sober. So the impact on the community is just so widespread, so far reaching. Yeah, and as we're back here looking at pictures of uh, Sergeant Hamzy, of course our thoughts out to his father Ahmad, his mother Salma. Uh, let's get out now to Fox 61's Lindsey Kane, who has been there at Rentschler Field since 4 a.m. She said the first people started trickling in at 6 a.m. Lindsey, what are you seeing and experiencing now? Hi, good morning. Well, you're just talking about the impact that these officers have on the community, and that is so clear here today. Like you said, I've been here since 4 o'clock this morning and dark and early at 6 o'clock this morning. People flooding into Rentschler Field in order to secure their spot to pay their respects. And we're not sure how many people are inside Rentschler Field at this point, but I have a pretty clear visual as to one of the entrances from where we're standing right now behind the flag, and it looks extremely packed. But what's really, really powerful and overwhelming is with all of those people in that stadium, you still do not hear a peep. It's just completely, completely somber, completely quiet, and we're still waiting for the caskets of 
Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte and Sergeant Alex Hamsey to be brought in now. But also just watching the procession come by uh, just a few minutes ago. You know, earlier this morning, I already saw thousands of police officers here. They were coming on buses. There was probably around 30 to 40 buses parked in the parking lot, and all of those buses were just packed with law enforcement officers. Just a sea of blue. All of those people walking into the stadium together as one. And even watching the procession come by, the hundreds of more officers that participated in that. You know, we said earlier that there were tens of thousands of people here seeing all of those officers that were here earlier this morning. And then again, during that procession, really just exemplified how much support is here today. And it's really powerful and overwhelming. It's just a beautiful tribute, yet so heartbreaking at the same time. So the support here at Rentschler Field today is so clear. And I know, Tim, you were saying, you know, a lot of these people will not get close to the families. They won't get to talk to the families. Just witnessing the amount of support for these families is going to speak louder than words. Absolutely. Yeah, you were just talking, Tim. Well, we hope the family members can see and feel the impact that they're at their point yeah. in their grief, that they can see how many tens of thousands of people and why that they're all there. And I think it's also important for a lot of these people, and I hope they all understand that, to know that your presence alone is enough. Mm. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us out there have been in a situation where uh, a loved one has uh, lost a loved one and you are now in the position of having to console them or to go to a wake or to a funeral and it's a deeply uncomfortable feeling for a lot of people. Uh, and you may be wondering, what do I do? What do I say? You can't mm -hmm. possibly put into words what these people need to hear. And time and time again, the sage advice is you don't have to say much of anything other than I'm so sorry and I'm here for you, whatever you need, because it's your presence alone mm -hmm. that matters. That is what people are going to remember long after the grieving process is over. And so that's why so many people are going to go there without ever having or intending Any to have contact right. with the DeMonte family and the Hamsey families and because it's the presence alone. And we've seen that, not just the presence there, but in people's actions over the last week. So many people in the community, not just going to Bristol and bringing flowers and items for the memorial, but making meals, yes. volunteers. Yes. You know, so many tens of thousands of people are there at Rentschler Field right now. And we've also learned that 20,000 meals were made and donated because of the timing, because people had to get there so early. Wow. So there were people who were who came together, they volunteered, they put bagged lunches together to hand out to people who were going to be sitting in the stadium for hours waiting for the service to start. Yeah. So there's just so many people who came together, not just today, but in all the days leading up, to just do something like you were saying, it's hard to know what to say, it's hard to know what to do, but that's what those, these people are doing. They're coming together, volunteering, bringing food, making food, bringing lunches, whatever they can do. It's helping on a second level. Mm -hmm. It's like a ripple effect and even that outpouring, you know, the 20,000 meals, not mm -hmm. for the family, for the people supporting the families. Mm -hmm. We have never seen anything like this and that that's the, ironic contradiction that we keep coming back to on a day like this. It's, uh, it's so beautiful, it'll make you cry. Mm. It's so sad, it will make you cry. It makes you proud to be an American, proud to be from Connecticut, mm -hmm. and yet it just rips your heart out at the same time. We wish we didn't have to do this. We wish we didn't have to see this. There's Sergeant Hamsey, presumably with his, uh, with his two sisters, and mm -hmm. our, our thoughts are with them too. And this another shot of what we assume is his wedding day. Yeah. He was just days away from celebrating his one year anniversary with his wife. And back to uh, Lieutenant DeMonte too. We want to show you more pictures and videos from the procession, which alone was absolutely uh, stunning to see. It's one that started from two different funeral homes at 8.55 a.m., one in North Haven where Lieutenant DeMonte had a private uh, calling hour service uh, the day before. The other one in Terryville where Sergeant Hamsey had a huge, what they call a walk-through wake, which uh, has become a little more common during the COVID pandemic so that people can pay their respects without actually having to come 
within uh, you know close contact with family members, but it also is just something that may have been necessary because of how many people sheer volume wanted to show people. up. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, it was they done buses, two doors down. Right. There was a parking location. There were shuttle buses from the designated parking area to the Wake location to help people get over there and pay their respects. And, and as we're looking again at the procession, we've been saying just the amount of vehicles, officers, departments who came out to show their support, it's, it's, it's like nothing we've ever seen here in the state. And it's, it's like nothing we've ever seen in so many different subtle levels. Obviously, people are sad, but we still see just how traumatized they are. Uh, we've seen people thankful but I don't know that we've ever seen people so personally thankful for personal interactions that we've had. I don't know if his microphone is ready, but a lot of those centered around Fox 61's Keith McGilvery. Yeah. Uh, twice this morning, at least twice, you inter After my accident, I called Marky, Salomone, and Morelli. A powerful law firm with the resources, experience, and personally touched. Mm -hmm. But another because she has family in law enforcement and that this is just not losing two officers, but I still feel like the manner in which they were lost is something that is still so deeply unsettling even right now. And that in itself has engendered even more, more. support, Keith. I don't know, uh, I I'm glad you're with us here, yeah. uh, back from Hartford where you spent the morning on the overpass. Recap for people who weren't here for our earlier coverage. Some of the people that you spoke with and their incredible personal connection, personal stories to these officers. Yeah, so deep breath for me. I'm typically our good news guy. Um, yes. So yes. this was <laughs> yeah. a twist for me today, but when you talk about the character of this community, when you talk about the heart of this community, videographer Earl Glazier right now is putting together a montage, <clears throat> excuse me, of some of the folks we spoke yep. to. Uh, I was in our overpass in Hartford, and one by one folks would trickle in to see the procession we're looking at here. And in my 15 years in this business, yeah, really. It mm. shakes you because a woman, you know, I talk to anyone. I yes. said, hey, what brought you out here today? Why was it important for you to be here? And a woman told me, I am here because Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte saved my life. Mm. Yeah. Uh, she said she was in a domestic situation. Yep. <clears throat> and she knew she needed help and she knew she needed an ear who would listen. She dropped a child off at school, walked into the police department, and fell apart. That was it. Mm. Yeah. And she said, he is the officer who said, we are going to handle this, mm. and we are going to handle it right now. And she said, he is the officer who made the arrest and in turn saved her life. Now, good news for her is that she is safe today, mm -hmm. and she is in a better place. But here's a woman who at seven o'clock this morning is standing alone over an overpass yeah. in our great city in a sweatshirt oh. with an iPhone. Just taking it all in like the rest of us, but when you think about your first responders and you think about men and women who serve us in uniform, that was a young man who was doing his job and who was celebrating this community and serving this community, rather, in the way he best knew how. And I, I hate to keep coming back to the manner in which they died, because we, we want to remember the people. But you mentioned he saved that woman from a domestic situation, and here he was, shot and killed while responding to what he thought was Another a domestic, domestic violence situation. And doesn't think twice about it. Nope. Mm -hmm. Just went. And shows up because he's on duty, because they're both on duty, and that's what they've been called to do is serve our community. She was incredibly grateful. Uh, I spoke with a mom of an East Hartford police officer who just shook knowing that she is proud of her son and the fact that he has stepped up to serve and he was part of this procession this morning, but knowing that when she sends her son out the door in the morning, it could happen to him. That it could happen to him. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, videographer Earl right. Glazier uh, piecing some of that together for us this morning. But to a person along an overpass on a cold October morning, they stood out there ready to show their respect to two men who, who paid the ultimate price. Mm -hmm. And that is what our police officers are every day, as you mentioned. 
they get up, they go to work, and they don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And that is what makes them heroes. They go into the places and the locations that everybody else is running from. And when that's happening, they're going in. Could I point out one help. more story? We have the time. By the way, we're, we're hearing that the funeral is going to start at noon. That's why thank you for being with us. And uh, Keith, please, the floor is yours. Uh, so we talk a lot on the show about how people step up and help the best way they knew how. Um, and that takes a different form for all of us. Uh, Tim, you as a dad can do something. Erica, you as a mom can do something. Well, first student was out there. So where you're thinking to yourself, well, what can the bus company do? Sure. Well, the bus company says, hey, we can get people where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So folks from First Student stepping up with their fleet of buses, which we saw live in the morning show earlier this morning, uh, putting posters on their buses. And what they were able to do successfully is take busloads of retired first responders mm -hmm. and EMTs who may not have been in the formal procession as we see it on the screen right now, mm -hmm. but wanted to be part of that crowd thousand strong at Rancher today. So First Bus says, well, we, we can help get them there. Uh, yeah. And they did, and they lined the overpass. Uh, they helped us track where that procession was. They had GPSs on their buses, so they were helping us <laughs> communicate back to you folks as to kind of where things stood this morning. So when you talk about people stepping up and doing what they can to serve our communities in a time of mourning like this, it's just, it's another good example of yeah of what that is. And even those overpasses, where we're at one more story, and I wish I knew, remembered, somebody can tell me, there's a mortgage company right off that overpass, and they have a parking lot, right? Yeah. So whenever we've seen these types of situations go through our community, mm -hmm. they yeah. say park here Use our with no reservations, ability. and you know they have a bathroom inside. Yet another example, and Keith, right before you yeah. came on the air, we were talking about these second and third order acts of kindness, of, kindness. of people helping people who are just, in turn, trying to help, help. other people. Wow. Yeah, I mean, just so So it's moving. really just an ongoing process that we continue to see yep. here. And it's just so great to see. And now Incredible we are back. Support. Uh, what you're seeing now as we've been talking is an alternating slideshow of just pictures of obviously Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey. We're on Lieutenant DeMonte now. Uh, being a police officer alone is enough, but you've seen and you've heard the things Lieutenant DeMonte did to go above and beyond, like helping out with Brian's Angels homeless outreach. We haven't even mentioned that this morning. Let's get out to Fox 61 Symphony Privet. She has spent a lot of the morning trying to let all of you know what kind of people these two officers were outside of their job. She's also been looking at uh, a lot of those uh, things behind you, the, the, the flowers. Symphony, I saw you tweet out the pumpkins out in honor of the three, mm. soon to be three, Demonte yeah. children. And even a onesie. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's really heartbreaking to see, and you, you really have to think about the fact that, you know, these weren't only officers here in the community. These people, they have families and uh, the, his children, Lieutenant uh, DeMonte's children, you know, their life is going to be changed forever. And that little one who's in the womb right now won't have any memories with uh, its father. Now, according to that pumpkin, it's a baby girl, but the baby girl won't have any memories with her father. Just think about how heartbreaking that is. Uh, I've spoken to several folks who stopped out at this memorial this morning. Uh, some of them have family members in law enforcement, so this is particularly touching uh, for them. I spoke to one woman not too long ago. She is a Bristol native. Uh, she has since moved to one of the surrounding towns, but she let me know she comes from a long line of uh, family involved in law enforcement and uh, something that's just like really heartbreaking for her. She is personally uh, taking this uh, personally rather. It's hitting home for her. Uh, her nephew, uh, if I remember correctly, she told me he was close with uh, Hamzy, Sergeant Hamzy says that um, he was uh, the, the godfather of his child. And today he is having a tough time as he is serving as one of the pallbearers uh, for Sergeant Hamzy. Just difficult to get through. And as she said, you know, she comes from a long line of law enforcement. She just thinks about how 
this kind of situation could have happened to any of her loved ones that are uh, in law enforcement. So, you know, just have to think about these situations and remember these people and the families that they leave behind, as well as the legacy uh, that they leave behind. Uh, as you said earlier, uh, Tim, Lieutenant DeMonte, uh, as I've heard from several people here in the community, he was very involved here. So uh, a lot of people had, you know, recalled memories they had with him, whether he was working with the youth uh, or something as simple as him spending time with the kids on Halloween. Well, one business owner told me, you know, I still have that picture of my niece and uh, Lieutenant DeMonte. He, he let her sit in his patrol car. And those are the kind of things that kids remember. Uh, that, that stays with them forever in their lives. Uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant DeMonte, he was 35 years old. He graduated from Middletown High School in 2005. Uh, he went on to study criminology and psychology at CCSU. Now, he started his career right here at Bristol PD back in 2012. And uh, speaking of children again, he also served as a school resource officer at Green Hills and West Bristol schools. And, you know, those kids over the years have grown to, you know, recognize his presence at the school. They probably each had their own relationship with him and uh, it grew to, you know, recognize seeing him or get used to seeing him on campus. He also served as an advisor for the Bristol Police Explorer Cadet Program, and he received several awards over the span of his career, including uh, the Silver Star Officer of the Month. And back in 2019, he was the co-recipient of the Officer of the Year Award. Uh, as you said, uh, Tim, he helped out with the Brian's Angels Homeless Outreach here. So you can just see the many ways he was involved outside of uh, the police department here. And we also learned uh, he was about to start a master's degree program. So he was looking to further his education. This young man had such a bright future ahead of him. Uh, but yeah, we'll just continue to stay on the scene here this morning in Bristol as uh, this memorial continues to grow and uh, people from Bristol and even surrounding communities come out to pay their respects this morning. For now, uh, live in Bristol, Symphony Privet, Fox 61 News. Symphony, thank you. As somebody just said, he had such a bright future ahead of him, but yet he already accomplished so much in his time with the Bristol Police Department and making such a huge impact in people's lives, saving yeah. people's lives. Uh, a, a very quick turn for us, so I apologize. We walked in the building about five minutes ago, but we did want to try to string together as quickly as we could just some of the emotional sound we got this morning with some of the folks that we uh, met or I met uh, out along that overpass. So take a listen if you would. Shay, you are from Bristol. I you am. told me that this hit home for you. Absolutely. You're watching this with us. What goes through your heart? I'm just in complete shock. It's so sad. Um, I, I have a loss of words. I just can't believe it, honestly. I was just hugging a woman who told me that Sergeant DeMonte rescued her in a domestic, and that is why she is here this morning. What does that say about him? Oh, I, you know what? Both of those gentlemen, I'm sure, are just tremendous human beings, tremendous officers. You can't say enough about them. And These officers had great hearts. Um, they were very known in our community. They were very known in our school systems in Bristol. So it's just a huge loss for so many people. To see a child go off in uniform every day knowing that he or she uh, is willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice for a job they love, what does that say to you as a mom? I'm just so proud. It hurts, but I'm proud. I'm sorry. I'm so proud of my son and what he does and how he does it and how he acts. And I know I taught him to respect people and I know he's a good person and a great officer. Her name is Louise. Her son is a 30 year old officer with East Hartford police department and and she was candid she said Keith I don't think people show the respect to our men and women in uniform as much as they should and she says it takes a situation like this to remind folks uh, that these men and women step up when called to do so the the first woman Shay uh, lives in Bristol she is from Bristol she knows that community she loves that community and to just give you the feel for being out there, I had a hard time talking to you two in the field mm -hmm. because it was just yeah. so loud from the roar of these cars making their way down 84. Um, 
and you could just feel the chill. Uh, not only from the noise, but just the visual. But Shay said, "I had, to, I had to be out here," mm -hmm. and she was there with, with a half a dozen friends who, who lined that route, and they were all lining their cell phones up along the fence to capture the same imagery that we're trying to bring folks this yeah, morning. I have to imagine it must have been just overwhelming to be out there live. And sadly, what you said, that mother said about people not appreciating police officers for what they do every day, sadly, I think she's right, it is taking something like this. I think now is when people are really sort of waking up to the fact of what they do every day and you know I've said it and a lot of people have said it whatever you are doing the next time you see a police officer take a moment and just say thank you for everything you do thank you for going to your job every day and for potentially putting for putting your life on the line every day for all of us for people complete strangers she said she raised her son to do right and she is just so proud to see him doing that now in a community he loves. And while it's important to remember and say thank you to the police officers you see and know in your life every day, of course, it's equally important to make sure that when, God forbid, an officer pays the ultimate price, that you don't forget what they've done. And I think we do a very good job of that. You mentioned East yeah. Hartford. They know very well uh, that this sort of thing can happen because yeah. it was East Hartford police officer Brian Azelton who was mm -hmm. shot and killed uh, back, I believe, 1999. Mm -hmm. Forgive me, I'm just speaking from personal experience, as I knew him growing up in, uh, in, in South Windsor and how traumatic that was, uh, even especially for my brother who was going through the police academy at the time. And I, I mentioned this, again, not to make it about me, but as I uh, occasionally go to Wapping Cemetery in South Windsor and pay my respects to loved ones that I've lost there, still to this day, people are putting out memorials in front of his headstone. Still to this day, we're 23 years removed. People don't forget, they're mm. never gonna forget. Mm. And uh, there's also a memorial in Meriden uh, to which both uh, Sergeant Hamsey and Lieutenant DeMonte's names have been added. We hate to mm -hmm. say it. It's the 149th and 150th names that have been uh, put on that memorial. And Tony Terzi was there and he has more on those names added just yesterday. Here at the Bristol Police Department, for much of the past week, we've shown you this beautiful memorial, but this soon will no longer be here. But there is a tranquil, beautiful spot up on a hill in Meriden where you can continue to honor these fallen officers for years to come. When I can do something like this, uh, it's pretty cool. Using these stencils that stone craftsman sandblasted for at least 20 minutes Thursday morning at the Connecticut Law Enforcement Memorial as members of the Bristol Police Department watched intently as their friends and colleagues were memorialized. Whenever there's an officer or a trooper or anything to do with law enforcement, if they die on duty, I put their names on. Etched in the memorial's pillars, something coordinated by the Police Association of Connecticut. In this situation, I felt it necessary to have the names put on the wall as soon as possible. I want the Bristol Police Department, if they're here at the academy training, I want them to have a place to go to that's not maybe a cemetery. The names of Bristol Police Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte and Sergeant Alex Hamsey were the 149th and 150th names to be added to the 37-year-old memorial. It's held up great. And unfortunately, we have to add two more names today, and, and we hope that this is the last two. Well, I don't charge for this. I can't. And this gratis work was a tip of the cap from the stone worker who spends most every day, he says, working in cemeteries. I do this for a living, but this is special to me. The Connecticut Law Enforcement Memorial is open to the public every day at the Connecticut Police Academy in Meriden, and especially families of the fallen are encouraged to visit. For them to be able to come up here, see their loved one's name, um, it, I just hope it gives them a sense of peace and closure. And because the upkeep of the Connecticut Law Enforcement Memorial relies in part on public donations, we of course will have a link for you at fox61.com or on the free Fox 61 News app. Here in Bristol, I'm Tony Terzi, Fox 61 News.
Tony, thank you. Now, if you've just recently joined us, this is our special coverage. We are waiting for the funeral for both of our fallen officers from Bristol, Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey, to be memorialized. Their funeral services are happening together, and that's happening at Rensselaer Field in East Hartford. But until then, we are just continuing to recap what we know about the officers, both on the force, members of the force, all the lives that they've changed and touched, but also in their personal lives yeah. as well, which is why we have these photos here. Yeah. Ladies and State gentlemen, is, uh, please find your this seat. Slideshow, and as you can hear as we're tapping in, they're now asking people to take their seats. Mind you, this is a funeral that was supposed to start at 11 o'clock. Not that anybody's really watching the time, but in case you were wondering why it hasn't started yet, they just had some delays, and they we were told recently they're looking at maybe noon as a starting time. So that might make sense if they're trying to give everybody a 15-minute uh, warning to get into their seats for the start of the funeral and by the way thank you so much for I said state police I'm not sure if it's them or the Bristol police whoever was providing that slideshow of Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey so important on a day like today when we're not just honoring their sacrifice but also honoring them as the people and as the family men that they that they are what you're looking at now is one of the caskets going downhill this is uh, the access way to the field at Rentschler Field in case you're wondering why everybody is sort of going downhill there so it looks like the start of the ceremony is imminent and look at the size of that American flag that's being draped from that East Hartford ladder truck too. And Lindsey Kane has been there at Rensselaer Field since 4 o'clock this morning. And Lindsey, you started seeing people arrive as early as 6 o'clock this morning, right? Yes, people started coming around 6 o'clock this morning just in order to make sure that they could secure their spot inside the stadium. But I actually just did a very emotional interview with the limousine driver for Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte's parents this morning. Now, his name is Ken. He said that it was an extremely difficult ride, of course, as you know, nobody can even imagine. But he said that uh, Dustin DeMonte's dad got right in the front seat. He said that for most of the ride, he was talking about just how proud he was of his son. He just kept saying that he was a great man and a great kid. He talked a lot about his childhood. And he said when they were watching the procession of just all the amounts of cars that took place, he said his parents would stop and say, wow, you know, look at all those lights. He said that they said it was just a sea of blue and red flashing lights and at some points they were just shaking their heads in disbelief as to the amount of people that showed up to support so take a listen to that mostly about his son uh, how dedicated he was what a great kid he was uh, we talked about his calling hours last night a little bit how it how it, his father's 95-year-old mother was there and managed to sit through it, which was not easy. But uh, it was just allowing him to reminisce because that's what people need to do if someone suddenly passes away. They need to talk about that person. And that man's name is Ken. He says that he was glad to be able to be that support for his parents during this extremely difficult time. He said just to be able to talk about some happy stories and memories he hopes made a difference in how they're feeling today. And he says, you know, for him, watching the amount of people that stopped on the side of the road during the procession just to salute or put their hands over their hearts was extremely emotional. And he says that he can't speak for Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte's parents, of course, but just by the look on their faces, they were extremely overwhelmed with all of the support and love that they're seeing this morning. So, Tim and Erica, back over to you. Lindsay, thanks. What a great interview. We, we weren't expecting any good news today, but that's right. about as, as, as close as we're going to get. And we had talked about this before, that you don't know where people are in the grieving process and that we hope that they were able to sort of rise above the grief just long enough to be able to get see some clarity support. and look around. And see the tens of thousands of people. Yeah, and I, I didn't well, think we were going to get an answer as to whether they were in that spot yet, mm -hmm. but at least it looks like for Philip DeMonte, uh, Dustin's father, he's there, and again, that's all you can ask for right now. Mm -hmm. That's all you can ask for.
Could I just add, you don't know where people are in the grieving yeah. process, but you also don't know who is in the middle of grieving right now. The woman who I met this morning along the 84 overpass, you would pass her any day and not even right. realize mm -hmm. that she is grieving this loss in unimaginable ways. And it just reminds you that we all have an opportunity to extend grace to everyone. To someone yeah. else. Very you know, that you don't know what people are going through, that these two officers touched an mm -hmm. unimaginable number of lives, and that people outside of this community and this immediate family are certainly mm -hmm. mourning as well. Yeah. And we're looking live. We're getting some a first-hand look now at inside the stadium as some of the family members are, are coming in, being escorted in, finding their seats there. Yeah, um, we haven't uh, gotten a wide view of what right. the layout looks like. We did see uh, in a picture from setup yesterday, it looks like at that time they had about 1,200 seats set up in front of a uh, modest podium in two blocks. Uh, not sure what else has been set up since then, mm -hmm. but... Uh, certainly plenty of room out there for plenty of mourners, and there will be plenty of mourners here. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Keith, not just in the stadium, uh, but beyond, including all of us here who are affected by this and all the people in the Bristol community who can't make it, who might be watching right now. People, like Keith said, you would never expect had a connection to any one of these two officers. It was, if I am remembering correctly, Keith, two different people throughout the course of the last 48 hours have told us that Lieutenant DeMonte alone has helped them on their path to sobriety. Uh, one was named Jamie Perciano, a Bristol resident, who said he was a big motivation for him to stay sober, uh, and that the kind words that he had said helped him to be where he's at today, and that by the grace of God, he is two years sober at this point. And again, I believe, I wish I could remember the name of the other gentleman, mm -hmm. is the second person to say that just about Lieutenant DeMonte. It's amazing. And we've heard that from people who were over there at the wake for Sergeant Hamsey as well. And we were talking about people coming from all over, people who have gotten, had their lives touched by these officers and then moved away, moved to other states. We heard from one person who came up from Pennsylvania to go to the wake for Sergeant Hamsey. Look at those stands. You know, and my dad had told me once, guys, that it that the true test of leadership was how you behave and, and how you perform when folks aren't looking. Yep. And when you hear these stories and you know that these officers stepped up behind the scenes, away from the cameras, outside the spotlight, to in some cases literally save lives. Mm. It is just a reminder, you know, who they are as men. Uh, in one case as a parent, but certainly as someone who served us in uniform. The right, kids, they are holding flowers, holding their parents' hands, being escorted by members of law enforcement. And look at that. Uh, we're seeing, I think, four different badges on uh, four different officers there. Once again, that's just your way to sort of get a sense of how many different jurisdictions and sent officers here. We were trying to list them as we were seeing them and as our reporters, Matt Karen and Lindsey Kane and Jimmy Altman were but seeing was, them pass by. There were so many, it was hard to keep track, yeah. you yeah. know? So many towns and cities, not just from Connecticut, but from Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, all across New England. Yeah, I mean, it was a laundry list just for Massachusetts alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know I'm invading your coverage here, but I'm just brought to mind another story. I was on vacation last week and was fortunate enough to travel to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And in Puerto Rico, people were coming up to me talking about these two men mm -hmm. and the loss that yeah. they had heard about mm -hmm. here right. in Connecticut, which just... It's it, amazing. It just stuns you. It is. Yes. That so far away from home, you know, these stories, those folks, many of them having roots to Connecticut, yeah. but right. certainly that, that their stories traveled quickly and that they too were just in awe of, of the fact that these men stepped up and, and paid the ultimate sacrifice here. Yeah, we don't want to be too presumptuous. I believe we're looking at the DeMonte family just based on the fact that they are now occupying the front rows of those seats right there on Rentschler Field near midfield here. And behind them on the main stands, on the main side where the press box is, now you are looking at just a sea, sea. of people. It's, uh, 
never really seen anything like this. Just so many people standing still and standing at attention. Almost reminds you, I, I, I hate to say this, but just sometimes when you see the pomp and the pageantry of one of the Army Navy football games and it's a sea of servicemen and women mm -hmm. all standing motionless, mm -hmm. I, th that's the closest analog I have. Mm -hmm. It was a stunning shot right there. Again, this is a funeral that was uh, scheduled to start at 11 o'clock. Uh, we will stay with you and carry this live for as long as it takes. Time is not a factor here. Uh, we're thinking it's going to start in the next five minutes or so. Uh, we saw, by the way, uh, just a, a huge outpouring of flowers on the same order of the, the size of the memorial, the makeshift one that's grown outside the Bristol Police Department that is now in front of the podium on which there will be speakers. Uh, if you're wondering what the ceremony is going to look like, uh, don't know uh, too much. We did, did get a list. It, it does look like the master of ceremonies is uh, Hannah Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, we're assuming that is the famous sportscaster. Mm -hmm. Uh, not 100% sure on that. It could be a different person named Hammond Storm. The national anthem is going to be sung by Trooper First Class Donna Saborin. And then uh, mention this again. Can't mention this enough. Uh, members of the Hamsey family and the DeMonte family are going to get up and speak as well. And it always amazes me how they have the strength mm -hmm. to find the right words to do that. Yeah. Uh, they're certainly not required to do that, but uh, uh, Sergeant Hamsey's father and sister and father-in-law are scheduled to speak, and uh, a couple friends of Dustin DeMonte, as well as Dustin's uh, now widow, Laura, she is scheduled to speak as well. Mm -hmm. Tim, no guarantee that that is Hannah Storm, but of course we know ESPN based in Bristol, and yeah. if you are a fan of SportsCenter, uh, they acknowledged this loss on that national broadcast. Mm -hmm. Because it happened just one mile away, I think, Locks. if a mile. And they, right. they commended the Bristol Police Department for what they do to protect them. Of course, ESPN is such a huge employer uh, and neighbor in our region. Yeah. And they also lit up the ESPN campus there in Bristol, as did so many other companies and businesses. They lit up blue in honor of the yep. officers over yep. the last week. We've seen such an incredible show of support in that way. Yeah, we caught up with one homeowner who had an elaborate Halloween display mm -hmm. out that he adapted to change all the LED lights from Halloween colors to blue. He had a sign that he started scrolling the names of not just uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Hamsey and Lieutenant DeMonte, but also somebody we haven't talked about enough, uh, mm -hmm. Officer Ayarado, the man who ended all this mm -hmm. by uh, shooting and killing the uh, shooter, uh, despite having been shot himself. And uh, our thoughts are with him and his family on this day. We wish him well in his recovery. Right now, I believe we're watching the Bristol Police Department uh, coming in. In addition to that, yeah, we've seen all sorts of buildings lit up blue this morning, just in a little touch that we didn't know about till we saw it. The Mohegan Sun Tower camera, which is usually uh, lit up in uh, shades of purple early in the morning, was also lit up blue as well. So again, we're uh, scheduled for probably somewhere in the neighborhood of noon. At this point, it looks like it's going to be a little after that. But we will stay with you here. And if you're joining mm -hmm. us, thank you on, on our other platforms, fox61.com, mm -hmm. fox61 app, also fox61 plus our streaming service. We will carry this funeral in its entirety. Of course we will. Mm -hmm. Uh, for as long as it takes. Yeah, if you do have to step away, we understand, but you can always keep this on your Fox 61 News app. That's going to be streaming as well. If you don't have the app, you can get it really quickly and just continue to at least listen in if you're going to be even driving if you have to step away. <clears throat> In addition to all those who are currently serving in uniform, it was amazing to see earlier this morning, uh, I mentioned earlier, the first student school bus company mm -hmm. stepping up to bring buses and buses and buses of retired law enforcement to this who were yeah. also on scene uh, sharing their respects as well. They have come from all over the country. Mm -hmm. Just from Massachusetts alone, again, Agawam, Andover. Boston sent 
such a large contingent that when the mo the the motorcycle uh, brigade, for lack of a better word, the cortege was coming into our camera's field of view, it, it took dozens. almost 30 seconds just yeah. for Boston police alone, and then there was Boston College police, Lowell, Springfield, just the myths, Yarmouth, Weymouth, Plymouth, they went by, and it looked like they were sort of congregated together, and then mm -hmm. after that, we saw from uh, New York City, we saw Yonkers, we've seen Long Island, uh, we've heard of Merrimack, New Hampshire, and then of course, uh, officers from Rhode Island, from Maine, from Vermont, from Colorado, from Washington State, and that's just what we could see mm -hmm. from our very limited vantage mm -hmm. point. And one thing to point out is that since the entire Bristol Department is here at this service, there's a lot of other departments throughout the state that are having their officers go to Bristol so that the Bristol officers can 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 grieve and so that the Bristol officers can be here that's what happens when something like this occurs other departments other police officers step in step up from other communities to help out this is another way yeah. of how people are continuing to give in kindness, give up their time, give up their support. In our 5 a.m. hour, Symphony and I shared a story on the morning news about volunteers who had packed 20,000 lunches. We were just talking yeah. about that a little while ago, yeah. yeah. For the people who were going to be at this service. It's just remarkable. And then there's all of the businesses that have brought food to the police department over the last yep. week and organized fundraisers to donate money to the Families Fund, which is at about $400,000 right now in just the last week. With so many worries, you just mm -hmm. don't want daily bills to be one of them. Uh, and that's to say nothing. I'm, forgive me if you just mentioned it before that uh, the website Barstool Sports decided to sell T-shirts and sweatshirts emblazoned uh, with their logo and also a, a tribute to the two officers and to Bristol Police as well. And that, because of the reach, the amazing reach mm. they get, uh, millions and millions of followers on social media. The founder, Dave Portnoy himself, has five million uh, uh, viewers alone. He got to speak to our Lauren Zenzi. Uh, he said he was happy to do it. And that wound up generating a hundred thousand dollars in, in just proceeds. two days. In, in two days, and yeah. that was a few days ago. Uh, there you do. There you see Hannah Storm, uh, the ESPN uh, mm -hmm. national sportscaster, who is going to be the master of ceremonies, along with a uh, chief Gould there as well, and that is the mayor of Bristol, uh, Jeff Caggiano, uh, who has also had a, a lot of nice words. Mm -hmm. And I remember when they were first announcing the names of the two officers who were killed, that he said, "We are the All Heart City." and our hearts are broken. And uh, he's done a good job just trying to lead the good people of the city of Bristol through up to this moment. Another perspective from being out along the procession route this morning in Hartford, you know, occasionally we'll, folks will joke about a rivalry between police and fire. You see the charitable events that pit right. police and fire on the hockey yeah, the rink or the tag football plays. field. Right. Yeah. But the Hartford Fire Department were the ones who stepped up in multiple locations this morning to raise the American flag above our city. And they said in a circumstance like this, they are all brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in uniform. And they stood there in the cold as cars and motorcycles rattled below in salute yep. to these true heroes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's what we've said before and what that mother was bringing up again. Everybody is united in the badge. Everybody is united as first responders. They wake up, that mother, she sends her, her son off to work every day, doesn't necessarily know that he's going to come back. And these family members, the family members of these two fallen officers, of course, they didn't know that either. And their lives changed in a moment because they went to respond. They went to what they thought was a call for help. Yeah, that's it. A domestic call. They ran towards the trouble. Mm -hmm. There was another dad who was out there this morning. I don't know if we have his interview or not. His name was Carl, uh, and he said that the, his son was in the procession this morning, and he said, there is nothing that makes me more proud than to see my son serve his community. And a woman who was very much like a stepmother to that officer echoed the same thing, but it is something that people are, are thinking about. Uh, and to have yeah. front and center in their minds and hearts as folks go out and serve.
All right, let's uh, dip in and listen to the national anthem if we can. While we're waiting for the national anthem to start, we just want to expand a little more on what you, uh, Keith and Erica, were talking about, about parents who are so proud of their kids. You always hear to protect and serve. Sometimes those are two very different jobs, and it's not always easy to do both because as a police officer, it's not just about the uncertainty that if you go to work on a given day, you're going to come home. It's that. A lot of times you're forced to confront the worst of society. Uh, it can be a very draining job. It can harden you. It can make you jaded if you're not careful. And that, in turn, can make it sometimes hard to do that second part. The protecting can make it hard to want to serve, to help people. And yet, that's exactly what seems to have made Elite Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey so special, that they took the time to help. When protecting alone would have been enough. Mm -hmm. And protecting alone can take such a toll on a police officer. And I know a lot of them, and you all out there know a lot of them. You know it's not hard. It takes a toll on your mental health. And yet to still be able to be resilient enough to do the little bits, the little good things, to help with the homeless shelters, to help with the police cadet corps. And to do it without reservation. Without. Mm -hmm. No was, hesitation. That was what that survivor of domestic abuse told me this morning, that yeah. he, you know, he did it without reservation. Well, it sounds like we're able to listen in a little better, so let's go to it.
The United States Honor Flag is entrusted to the Honor Network, which was founded on the conviction that every person who is committed in service to our communities and our country deserves the support of every single American. And that an increase in American patriotism is vital in keeping our great nation united. The United States Honor Flag is one American flag that was at ground zero in the immediate wake of 9-11 and has traveled millions of miles since. The United States Honor Flag has traveled to the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan, has traveled aboard the last space shuttle launch in 2011, and has honored thousands of American heroes in law enforcement, fire, EMS, and members of the United States Armed Forces. Carrying the United States honor flag today is Bristol Police Officer Alec Ayurado. Detail, attend, hook. present, arms.
And now our national anthem will be sung by Trooper First Class Donna Saburin. Detail, present, arms. Oh, see, can you see? and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the rampart we watch or so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs burn details on carry colors detail take seats please take your seats please turn your attention to the stage now for chief brian gould from the bristol police department Good morning. Good morning. Family, Family. Friends, friends, colleagues, thank you for gracing us with your presence today as we grieve, honor, recognize, and celebrate our fallen brothers. Exemplary supervision is essential. John C. Maxwell, American author, speaker and pastor, defines leadership as a process, not a position. Leadership deals with people and their dynamics, which are constantly changing. The challenge is to facilitate growth and encourage positive change. He also believes that the pessimist complains about the wind, the optimist expects it to change, the leader adjusts the sails. As a leader, we often hear the phrase, lead by example. 
However, that's not enough. You must be an excellent example. And Sergeant Dustin DeMonte and Officer Alex Hamsey are the epitome of excellence. Today, before we go any further, we will ceremonially promote each of them into their new ranks. Our city charter reads that all persons appointed to the police force or to any advancement from that force shall take the following oath, which I will administer. Dustin DeMonte, you shall solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, the laws and ordinances of the City of Bristol, and obey the rules, regulations, and orders of the police department, and will discharge the duties of lieutenant according to the best of your knowledge and ability. Deputy Chief, please present the lieutenant's new badge of office. Alex Hamzee, you shall solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, the laws and ordinances of the City of Bristol, and obey the rules, regulations, and orders of the police department, and will discharge the duties of sergeant according to the best of your knowledge and ability. Deputy Chief, please present the sergeant's new badge of office. At this time, it would be appropriate and fitting for the family to witness all of you here today acknowledge these officers' accomplishments with a standing ovation. Thank you. The ceremony will now be turned over to Reverend John Ravel and Pastor Dustin Alley. Thank you and good morning. A couple of points before we proceed. Alex and Dustin identified and aligned with the historic Christian faith and tradition, and the families have asked us to provide a Christian memorial service, which of course we are pleased to provide. This is a time of deep mourning, but also of celebrating two incredible lives lived incredibly well. It is entirely appropriate for there to be open weeping, but it is also entirely appropriate for there to be laughter and joy. You will understand in a little bit. There is no shame and no judgment in either. Finally, to the DeMonte and Hamsey family, Thank you for allowing us to be with you right now. Dustin and Alex made the ultimate sacrifice, but you have made an even deeper 
sacrifice. Since last Wednesday night, your family has grown exponentially across the state and across this nation to include hundreds of thousands of law enforcement officers who love you and care for you deeply. Still, we know you are in excruciating pain right now. The depths of anguish and loss you are experiencing right now is far beyond any form of measurement. Yet you have relinquished your right to mourning privately, which would be understandable, and have opened your hearts to allow us to be with you at this most difficult time. What has happened so far this morning and that which is to come is to provide maximum honor, dignity, and respect for your Dustin and Alex. We see it and treat it as a sacred trust and pledge to handle your hearts with tenderness and compassion. So let's proceed. Welcome to all of you. And on behalf of these precious families, both of them, thank you for your presence and thank you for your incredible outpouring of support over the last week. Your presence and gestures mean more to them than you could possibly know. We are here today to mourn the tragic loss, but also to celebrate the incredible lives of Sergeant Alex Hamsey and Lieutenant Dustin DeMont. Before we go further, let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, only you know the depths of evil roots that have borne such fruit. But right now, we thank you for the incredible gifts of these two warriors. We understand from scripture that every good and perfect gift comes from you, the Father of lights, in whom there is no shifting shadows. And these two incredible human beings are two of the most precious gifts you could have given to their families, to their department, to their city, and to this nation. They deserve honor. And so we invoke your blessing on this time so that they would be honored in the most appropriate fashion. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. A review, a summary of the two obituaries. Sergeant Alex A. Hamsey, loving son, brother, husband, and friend, was taken from us on October 12th, 2022. He was born to Ahmad and Salma on December 16th, 1987 in Bristol, where he attended the Bristol Eastern High School. And before his untimely death, he served his beloved comedy community for eight years as a member of the Bristol Police Department. Alex was incredibly proud of his profession and served his hometown with conviction and integrity. Alex was one in a million. His smile would light up a room. He was always in a good mood and would lighten even the darkest of days with his infectious laughter. Alex was dedicated to his family and friends. He loved spending time with them especially his loving parents, who he never allowed to need or want for anything, his beautiful wife, Katie, and their adorable dog, Gizmo. He adored both so much, but also his sisters, his friends, their husbands, with whom he shared a special bond, and his nephews, who were the light of his life. When he wasn't spending time with family, he was spending time with his lifelong friends. Growing up as the only son, his friends were his brothers. He would often say how lucky he felt to have so many brothers in childhood through to adulthood. 
where he went on to meet so many more of his brothers in law enforcement. Alex's love was selfless, and he would never turn down an opportunity to be there for the people he loved. Alex had a need for speed, and to say that he was a BMW M Series enthusiast would be an understatement. Alex was passionate about physical fitness, which helped offset his addiction to sweets and dessert. Alex was a lifelong Yankees and Patriots fan, a contradiction that only those of us from Connecticut can understand. As an officer with the Bristol Police Department, Alex served as a longtime advisor for the Bristol Police Explorer Cadet Program, a unique learning experience in policing through instruction, demonstration, and hands-on training. Alex was passionate about teaching young adults the values needed to succeed in serving their community with integrity and commitment. In April of 2021, Alex was select selected to join the Central Regional Emergency Response Team, a team covering the towns of Bristol, Plainville, Southington, Plymouth, and joining the team was one of the many highlights of his career. The Bristol Poli Connecticut Police Department, CERT, came in first at the Connecticut SWAT Challenge this year, which was held at the Hartford Gun Club. The event was, was a three-day competition with 28 teams, which consisted of both law enforcement and military personnel. These 28 teams were from all over the United States and traveled to East Granby, Connecticut, to compete. Alex will forever be in their hearts, and we will remember him fondly through our shared photos, memories, and stories. The Hamsey family and the Scott family extends our heartfelt condolences to the family of Sergeant, now Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte, and our deepest gratitude to Officer Alec Ayarato for his bravery and heroic acts of service. <laughs> Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte, 35, of North Haven, tragically passed away on Wednesday evening, October 12th, of 2022. He truly died a hero. He was the beloved husband of Laura and a loving father to his daughter, Phoebe, and his son, Porter, and a third child due in March of 2023. Dustin was born in Middletown, Connecticut on May 24th, 1987 to Mona and Philip, and grew up with his brother Philip and sister Michaela. He graduated 2005 from Middletown High School, where he was catcher for their baseball team, as well as a member of the band. Dustin loved dancing, music, and exercising. He earned a bachelor's degree in criminology at Central Connecticut State University in 2012. Dustin was recently accepted to Nichols College, where he was to begin his master's in organizational leadership program on Halloween. Dustin was an avid fan of the community. He helped in honoring local officers who were killed in the line of duty and helped the homeless through outreach program of Brian's Angels. He was a school resource officer at Green Hills and West Bristol High School School in Bristol. Dustin always lived life to the fullest. He was a kind, gentle spirit who was loved by many. Above all, Dustin wholeheartedly loved his family and every single moment he spent with them. He was a very proud husband and father who was taken way too soon. These were two absolutely incredible human beings. 
Both have been noted consistently by both superiors and peers for their exemplary conduct, performance, and camaraderie on the job and off. They were consummate human beings and law enforcement officers. They did not deserve what they received, and they deserve far more than what we can give today. And we hope that their model and example of sacrificial service will be reflected in the lives of every officer who observes this ceremony. And as a result, their pattern, their memory, and their legacy will continue on and never die. And now Pastor Dustin Alley will come and share some reflections from God's Word. Thank you. This morning I want to offer my prayers, my deepest condolences to the family, friends, and many that are in the stadium watching online, mourning the loss of two great heroes. The words that are said today, the respect and honor that will be given is much deserved. To those hurting deeply, it will not fill the hole that has been left in your hearts. At this time, I would like to point you to the one person I know who could help with the emotional and spiritual wounds you have suffered. It is during these dark times of your life I ask you to make this psalm your prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord DeMonte shared a passage with us that was read at their wedding. It would be appropriate to share it with you now as an example of the love Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamzif had for their families, their friends, and their communities. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. That love is exemplified in Jesus Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection, and it was seen through the lives of Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey. They lived according to his commandment. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Truly, Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey were men with the greatest love for their friends, their family, and their community. Greater love than we could ever understand was seen in Jesus 
And it's why I encourage you to find comfort in him now, who said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The blessed hope that we as believers has is an eternal home in heaven. There are many things about heaven that will be wonderful. The reuniting of loved ones, the streets of gold, the grates of pearl, no pain and no tears shall befall us there. The greatest thing about heaven, though, will be residing in the presence of God. And the Bible describes that this way in Revelation. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey are no longer with us. The love they showed, the joy they had, and the lives that they lived will forever be etched into the hearts and into the memories of those who knew them best. The Lord promises to never leave you nor forsake you. And it is to him I encourage you to turn your hearts to in these sad times. I'd like to end my time with you today with a prayer for these families. And at the conclusion of my prayer, I will recite what you know as the Lord's Prayer. As I begin with our Father, I would ask you to please join me. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for our salvation secure in you. God, we thank you for men that you've given us like Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey. God, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit to bring comfort and peace that only he can to those mourning the tragic loss of these men. Lord, I pray you continue to protect every department represented here and all around our nation. Lord, we, we grieve today and we ask you to bring peace. Please join me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. At this time, I now turn the podium back to Reverend John. Thank you, Pastor. There are no words. I've only said that twice in the, in the last 10 years, but it is so fitting. Honestly, some words come to mind, heinous, outrage, atrocity, monstrous, evil, darkness, wicked, fear, frustration, but none of these suffice in expressing the depths of the darkness, nor how tragic the loss. This is hor horrific on so many levels, and the human mind could not possibly comprehend the depths and the long-term impact of this loss. But there's a passage that comes to mind, and the pastor referred to it, 
uh, last Friday night during the vigil through Terryville. Uh, he was asked, spur of the moment, to share a few words, and he shared that passage from John chapter 15. No greater love has any man but that he lays down his life for his friends. There is great impact and hope and encouragement in those passages. He referred to it, but these two individuals in their willingness to sacrifice because of their love for their community and their, and their families, but their willingness to sacrifice directly reflects the character, the priorities, and the heart of Jesus Christ. He said that just before he was betrayed and turned over to be crucified. And it has struck me that law enforcement officers, more than any other vocation, reflect this dynamic and this principle. Every officer, when they put on their uniform, understands that they are going to serve and sacrifice and possibly make the ultimate sacrifice. One officer put it to me this way. He said when he was a Marine, he might be deployed for nine months or 12 months, and each time he had to prepare his family with the prospect that he might not come home. And then he said to me, Rev, I have to prepare my family every day. And it is such a contradiction. It is profoundly astounding and confounding that there are segments of our population that hold law enforcement officers in disdain and with contempt when it is these very officers who are willing to sacrifice their lives to deliver them from those who would inflict evil upon them. I don't understand it. And yet they do every day. And to take it even further, what other profession will take the opportunity and take seriously the responsibility to deliver and protect the lives of those who would harm them? But police officers are willing to do it every day. And in so doing, they reflect the character, the priority, and the heart of Christ. Because he was willing to die for not just his friends, but those who hated him and wanted him dead. And so for the Hamsey family and DeMonte family, I hope you will be encouraged by the reality that these two indeed reflected Christ in their service and their sacrifice. And indeed, all police officers do. I need to insert, this does not mean that police officers act like saints when they're off the job. I know better. I know many of the officers in the stadium, and I know better. The term choir practice means something totally different to police officers than it does to church members. But regardless, every officer that follows the example of these two brave heroes reflects the character, the priorities, and the heart of Christ. There's one more point of hope that I would like to leave with you. Jesus went on to die in this historic, traditional Christian faith to which both of these men identified and aligned with, hold that it was necessary because of God's love. 
One of the core tenets of the Christian faith is that God is a loving Heavenly Father. He loves us in ways that none of us could ever possibly understand or imagine. But we have decided to reject his love and go our own ways, all of us. But he loved us so much that he wanted to provide a way for us to be reconciled with him. And that was Jesus' death on our behalf. So that all who would entrust their lives to him and trust him could experience that reconciliation with the Father. And this is where the hope comes in. Our precious, loving, heavenly Father is the source of all comfort and peace and healing and strength. And he is available to provide all of that for both of these precious families and all of those who mourn. And so, please take hope in the reality that these two reflected the person of Christ in their service and in their sacrifice. But also, please take hope in the reality that a loving Father is ready to embrace you, hold you, carry you, and sustain you from this point, Father. And I've been asked to pray, this, uh, to pray this police officer's prayer. And I pray it on behalf of every officer here and listening. When I start my tour of duty, God, wherever crime may be, as I walk the darkened streets alone, let me be close to thee. Please give me understanding with both the young and the old. Let me listen with attention until their story's told. Let me never make a judgment in a rash or callous way, but let me hold my patience. Let each man have his say. Lord, if some dark and dreary night I must give my life, Lord, with your everlasting love, protect the people in my life. Indeed, and amen. And now we'll move to some reflections from family members and friends. There will be a video from Reverend Zachary Mabe, who is the pastor of Terryville Congregational Church, who actually performed uh, the wedding ceremony for the Hamseys. He could not be here, uh, but he left this video uh, to share his thoughts. And as he's sharing, I'm going to ask that the representatives from the families who are going to be giving their own reflections to make their way to the platform. If you'll pay attention to the screens. Grace and peace to you in the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. We read in Psalms, cries out to God of lament, frustration, even anger. And today we call out those cries as well. We are hurting. And yet, God always brings hope. God always shines that light that can never be extinguished. And we turn to God, and we place our trust in God. I spent some time talking with Alex's family, and I want to take a moment to talk about Alex's commitment to the community. Alex was very proud of his job, but he was also very protective of it. You know, the police don't always have the best or get the best reputation. When you see what's happened over the past few years, and Alex was aware of that. And Alex was so protective of his family, 
they were not allowed to put a magnet on their car supporting the police or have a t-shirt or put a flag in their yard. Why? Why do we judge our police? We are called to love one another. Every profession has its bad apples. Priests, clergy, teachers, nurses. Do we write off the whole profession because of that? God teaches us not to judge, but to love. But Alex knew of this judgment, and he was very protective of his family. But one of the things that they want to share is that they are so very proud of him, and they love him to the depth of who he is. And who is he? He's a true hero. What does that word mean to you, hero? Whatever it means to you, that's what Alex is. And so is Sergeant DeMonte, and so is Officer Ayurato, and so is the entire police department. We are here to love one another. Alex had a commitment to his work, and he wanted to teach values to the youth of the community. He spent his whole life in Bristol. And when you spend your whole life in a community, you get to know people. And that night when he heard the call, he recognized the names of the house where he was being called to, and he wanted to be first because he believed in the mission. And he wanted to get there, and he wanted to use his presence to bring calm, to bring stability, to bring love. He loved all people regardless of their background. He didn't label them, he loved them. And he made a commitment to protect and serve, and that's what the entire department does. And that is what we are called to do. Not that we're all called to be police, but we're all called to love. Where do we go from here? I think, I hope, can speak for Alex's family when I say, we want to say to you to be proud of those who protect and serve, all first responders, and love them, and love your community. Be proud of your community. Be willing to be there for other people in their time of need. That's what these officers did without judgment, without hesitation. Today we bow our heads and we give thanks to God for these heroes and we ask for God's embrace. What might you do going forward to go out into this world and love a little deeper? Let go of those labels that you put on people. Let go of those categories that you box them into and love them. Let us pray. Oh God, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. You're the giver of life and you are the conqueror of death. And we praise you with humble hearts. Wrap your loving arms around these families who are hurting and show them that light that cannot be extinguished. Help us all to love each other. Help us to love our first responders and help us to show that pride in our community. Teach us how to be better at loving each other. Help us to take the values that Officer Hamsey and Sergeant DeMonte and Alec Ayurado have instilled and help us to take that example and live it in our daily lives. In your great name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And now, 
Bristol Police Chief Brian Gould will come and share some reflections, followed by Bristol Mayor Jeffrey Caggiano. To our brothers, sisters, our family in blue, an extended family who serve on the front lines each and every day, our community, our family and friends, again, on behalf of the great men and women whom have served and are currently serving the Bristol Police Department, I thank you for being here with us today. Words cannot express the grief we are experiencing, the anger, confusion, frustration, fear, uncertainty, and overall sadness. On Wednesday, October 12th, three of our own Bristol police officers were ambushed. As a result, we lost Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte, a 10-year veteran of the Bristol Police Department, and Sergeant Alex Hamsey, an eight-year veteran of the Bristol Police Department. Officer Alex Ayarato was shot and injured. Being the true hero that he is, Officer Ayarato maintained courage and composure and delivered a surgical strike which immediately stopped the act of killing. Officer Ayarato's brave actions undoubtedly prevented further deaths from occurring, saving arriving Bristol police officers and the community from immediate death. We are so proud that he is here with us today, and he walked that flag in without his crutches. Please, a round of applause for this hero. Thank you. Thank you. On this devastating night, we lost two exceptional Bristol police officers. There are those that are good, those that are great, then there are those that are exceptional. Today you'll hear many great things about Dustin DeMonte and Alex Hamsey. Their exceptionalism is truly evidence-based. There is no doubt they love being police officers. They showed up day in and day out with exceptionally positive attitudes. Both of them were always smiling and or laughing, and they brought much joy and happiness to the Bristol Police Department and the community of Bristol. Alex, with his award-winning smile, it's the type of smile that truly melts your heart. His laugh is equally impressive. Due to the acoustics in our department, you would often hear Alex's laughs echoing through the hallways. There were times I had no idea what he was laughing about, and I wasn't even nearby. I just started laughing because I could hear him. When COVID hit, I saw him one day and immediately saw something different. It was totally unusual and it didn't sit well with me. It was the mask. I couldn't see his huge smile and I didn't like it. When I would see him, I would ask, you still smiling behind that mask, kid? 
he would always answer, absolutely, pull down the mask and show me. Dustin was always smiling as well. But for me, it was his eyes, very warm, inquisitive, engaging, yet firm and decisive. When we talked, I could feel his eyes piercing me. He never lost focus or made you feel like you were wasting his time. In fact, he made you feel like all your interactions were necessary and important. Ironically, during COVID, his eyes were accented due to the mask. Just an incredible, kind individual. He is the definition of servant leadership, always putting the needs of his people before his own. A very high level thinker and doer. In speaking with Alex and Dustin's families, it was evident to me that they wanted everyone to know how much they loved their families, how much they loved being Bristol police officers, how much they loved serving the community of Bristol, and how much they loved the department and everyone in it. Time and time again, they would make this very clear to me, and I assured them that I would make this very clear to all of you. Today, we will grieve together. We will cry for one another because that's who we are. We will cry together for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty because that's who we are. We will cry together for Dustin and Alex because we will miss them terribly. And just when we think we're all cried out, together we will drop to our knees and we will cry, cry, and cry so hard that it will feel like our insides are turning out. We will do this for these beautiful families who have lost two exceptional men. Then we will look to each other. We will pick each other up. We will dust each other off, dry our eyes, lift our chins, and persevere. Because that's what Alex and Dustin expect. They were not your average individuals. They were exceptional. And we owe it to them to strive for that level of exceptionalism that they so seemingly easily achieved. There is an inscription on the National Law Enforcement Memorial that reads, it is not how these officers died that made them heroes. It is how they lived. Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte and Sergeant Alex Hamsey personify those words, and therefore, we will celebrate and honor them with pride. No doubt we are hurting very badly at this moment. The Bristol Police Department, the community of Bristol, the state of Connecticut, and the nation shook in horror on October 12th. Now we must rise together in solidarity and honor the oaths we all took to protect and serve our communities. We are a noble profession, and we will not let evil prevail. Thank you to all of you protecting and serving on the front lines. What you do is honorable, and you must not let anyone ever take that away. You are the line between order in utter chaos, and I respectfully request that you firmly hold that line for I and many, many others are counting on you. To the community of Bristol, thank you for answering my call to action. Your love, support, and caring is truly remarkable and we appreciate 
our wonderful partnership. To the men and women of the Bristol Police Department, so much pain, so much grief, so much fear, uncertainty, I know. I see you, I feel you. I exist in my position to serve you. With pride, I stand shoulder to shoulder with you, and we will pull through this together. You are my family, I love you dearly. To the families of Dustin and Alex, we love you. We are always here and will always be here for you. Thank you for giving us the honor of knowing and serving with these fine men. The new lieutenant and sergeant have made their expectations very clear for us to be forever exceptional. A very high expectation indeed. However, together, we will prevail. Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte and Sergeant Alex Hamzy, you have been called for a higher service. Go with dignity and pride, for you have served exceptionally. May God bless you, and may your souls rest in eternal, everlasting peace. Lieutenant, Sergeant, we have it from here. Thank you, Chief Gould. Bristol is our big, small town, yet it feels both a little bigger and a little smaller. Bigger because in the face of tragedy, we've seen the whole world come together in support, in kindness, and in love. There's a palpable feeling that our borders have expanded exponentially to allow those who are sad and grieving to share in our heartbreak. Smaller, because our all-heart community is heartbroken. Pain is individual. You can know what it feels like to break an arm or get a cut, but no one will experience it the same way you do. That's where Bristol is today. As an individual community, we are reeling from the loss of two great men who personally dedicated themselves to us. As a community, we were brought closer, asking why the lives of, our, of these brave men, who are our friends and family, were taken so suddenly. Why? That's a tough one. We will all ask that question and deal with the search for the answer in our own ways. Why did Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey have to make the ultimate sacrifice for us? Why can't those officers be on the beat doing what they love today? Why do the families, friends, and all those who were loved and protected by these men have to ask why? On a personal note, October 12th, the day the world stopped in Bristol, happens to be my birthday. So now as I begin each trip around the sun, I will also struggle with the unbearable thoughts and whys that fill silent moments. I will choose to look to all of you here today as the answer of that why. Like a tree that roots itself on a rocky mountainside, we've established a bond in this stadium among the most difficult circumstances imaginable. As I look around and see the effort, time, energy, and the, all these information that people brought together to create this special event for Dustin and Alex, I recall the countless stories of how they loved their jobs and fearlessly protected and served our community. I feel sadness, but I also feel the love we have for Dustin, Alex, Alec, and all of our police officers. It gives me hope. And beyond that, 
It gives me faith that what is rooted here today will surpass all our expectations. I hope you turn to your own faith, your family, and your friends to find your answers. I hope you continue to shower love, support, and generosity on the families of Dustin and Alex, and I hope you continue to pray for Alex's full recovery. I hope you will continue to use the energy we feel here today to help the others see past the divisions that have been sown. After all, we may be different branches, but we all come from the same roots. Let's honor and support all officers moving forward as they suit up and report for their shifts, wanting nothing more than to help others. By wrapping our arms around the men and women in blue who pledge to honor and serve our communities, we continue to serve two of the best who gave their lives to serve others. I know Dustin and Alex will be looking down on their friend, Alec Ayorado, on October 12th next year and celebrating his anniversary of joining the Bristol Police Force. That will bring a smile to my face on a difficult day. What I've seen in Bristol this past week is remarkable. Acts of kindness, people stopping to pay tribute, people helping one another. The generosity is infectious. And thank you to all the officers for serving. I think some of the people in Bristol have been nice to you all. Bristol, we've got this. Connecticut, follow our lead. And America, join us. God bless Bristol. God bless our men and women in blue. And God bless America. And now members of the Hamsey family will come and share. Uh, first, his father, Alex's father, Ahmad Hamsey. Hello everyone. My name is Ahmad Hamzi. I'm the father of Sergeant Alex Hamzi. My wife and I, it's Salma Hamzi, and we are Alex's parents. I was not sure I would be able to speak about our son today. But I wanted to make sure you know what type of person Alex Hamzi was. From our perspective, forgive me if I am not able to finish my remarks, but it was important for me to try. First, on behalf of the entire Hamzi's family, I would like to offer our sincere condolences to the Nemado family of all the people in this stadium. They completely understand now how we feel and we certainly understand how they feel. Second, I would like to offer our heartfelt thanks to officers Alec and Jordan. Officer Jordan is truly an American hero for the action he took on that awful night. And we will be forever grateful for what he did in confronting pure evil. I served this country, and I was so proud of serving this country. I served it five years in Iraq. 
and I three times almost, almost died. But God was looking down on me and saying, keep going, I'm right behind you. And I am very proud and I loved every minute of it. If you don't mind me giving my nephew Bill Hamsey, Judge Hamsey, to finish my... Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming to this ceremony. The support we have received from family, friends, and total strangers has been overwhelming. What gets us through the days is knowing that people support us. They pray for us, and they want to help us in any way possible. Believe me, it is very much appreciated. Lastly, I'd like to thank Mary Caggiano, Chief Gould, the Bristol Police Department, the Connecticut State Police, and everyone else who has had a role in planning these services. Our sole goal was to try our best to honor the memories and the sacrifices of our son and of Lieutenant DeMonte. As most of you know by now, Alex was born and raised in Bristol. He graduated from Bristol Eastern in 2006 and played football there, appropriately so. As many of you also may know, Selma and I came to this country from Lebanon. We came here for many of the same reasons that other immigrants did. We wanted an opportunity to create a better life for us and our family. We don't like the United States of America. We love the United States of America. Alex also loved the USA, and I believe he developed his love of our country because of how Selma and I feel. Because of his love for the US and his desire to serve it, he originally wanted to join the Coast Guard. Although he attempted to enlist, he developed an allergy which disqualified him. When joining the Coast Guard didn't work out, he set his mind on serving his country and community as a police officer. But he didn't just want to be a police officer. He wanted to be a Bristol police officer. While preparing for his application and for an opening, he worked at a few jobs. He was a steel worker. He worked construction, and he also worked in our family restaurant, Crystal Diner. His main job at the diner was to make toast on weekends. He'd work right next to the chef. And as he was prone to do when he got older, he took his job seriously and tried to do the best he could. Our customers took notice, and one day, a few of them came into the diner with a trophy, which named Alex the Toast Master. <laughs> Needless to say, we proudly displayed that trophy for everyone to see. Speaking of our chef, 
His wife became pregnant with their first child. When Alex found out, he took the chef to a store and bought them all the diapers they needed for their initial supply. For everyone who has had children knows there are a lot of diapers in an initial supply. The chef offered to pay Alex back, but of course, Alex refused. He refused because he was a generous, kind, caring, and thoughtful person. There was another recent example of Alex's generosity. As I mentioned earlier, Selma and I are from Lebanon. The town I'm from is called Khreit al -Shuf. As many of you may know, Lebanon has been struggling lately. One of the major issues they face is the lack of reliable electricity. Because the electricity is sporadic, the common areas in town where people get together stay dark when the sun goes down. Alex had an idea to buy solar lights for these areas so they could be lit up and people from the town could once again gather there. That's who Alex was. He always thought of others before he thought of himself, especially when it came to kids. After he was hired by the Bristol Police Department, one of the first things he did was to become involved in the Youth Cadet Program, also commonly known as the Explorers. Alex always had a soft spot for kids. When participating in the Youth Cadet Program, he would often speak with the kids about what makes our country so great. He would educate them about the freedoms we enjoy, which so many people around the world can only dream of. He would also instill the fact that these freedoms come with responsibilities. The responsibility of being a good citizen, of giving back to your community, of being considerate to other people. He was an effective role model to these kids because he practiced what he preached and they responded to that. Alex was certainly a fun person to be around. As you've heard, he had an infectious smile and personality, which drew other people to him. But what people may not know about Alex is that he was also a very deep thinker about the issues which face our country and the reasons our country is as great as it is. That's what I call him, the all-American boy, because that's who he was, an all-American boy. God bless us with Alex and the 34 years we had with him, and we're eternally grateful for that. Obviously, we wish we had him for a lot longer, but sometimes when things like this happen, we can only believe that it is God's will. And who are we to challenge God's will? In conclusion, our names are Ahmed and Selma, but if we're known for the rest of our lives, as Alex Hamzi's parents, it would be the highest honor which we could ever achieve. We love you, Alex, more than life itself, and we'll meet up with you at some point in time. Thank you, everyone. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.
And now Alex's sister Donna will come and share, accompanied by his other sister, Rania, and his precious wife, Katie. this when Alex first became a police officer. And now that Alex has passed, it speaks to me more than ever. When I see his badge, it is not just a number. It signifies honor, and it has my ultimate respect. His badge that I proudly stand behind lies upon his chest close to his heart, because this call on his life as an officer takes heart. So while you may know my officer as a number, know he is far more than that. He is my hero, my protection, the love of my life, and of course, my heart. I love you, Alex. Good, good, good. Good. Guests and friends, my father, mother, sister-in-law, sister and I, thank you all for being here today. We are here before you saying the words that we have never wanted to say, giving the speech that we have never wanted to give, and feeling the loss that we have never wanted to feel. Many of you knew Alex as an officer, but he was so much more to us than that. Our parents made us siblings, but we, were, but we chose to be best friends. The three of us laughed until our stomachs hurt, and we shared more memories than we can even begin to remember. Over the last week, our childhood home has been overwhelmed by love, support, and community. And while we are so incredibly grateful for this outpouring of kindness, we still experience a sense of despair, which slowly creeps over our hearts every time the door open swings, because we know it will never be our brother coming in to greet us again. We keep waiting for him to pull up in the driveway in his new white truck, the door flying open, coming in to kiss our mom on the cheek and looking for something sweet to eat. As many have already said since his passing, Alex was the kind of person who would literally drop anything to do something for someone that needed him. If we needed him to pick up a piece of furniture, he would be there. If, you needed, if, if we needed him to dress up as a Red Power Ranger for Halloween to go trick-or-treating with his nephews, Alex would be there. That's always been his heart, and his family was his highest priority. He always had our back. Our family shares something special, an incredible bond, one that runs deep beyond measure. Our parents came to this country, like most immigrants, and worked hard to make it. They struggled so that we would have a chance at a better life 
a life full of opportunity. Growing up, they always instilled in us to never be lazy, to always fix your bed, to always protect and love one another. They taught us to never be greedy, but always humble. They taught us to always give to those around you, even if you had nothing to give. As the only son, Alex held a strong sense of responsibility to provide for them what they provided us. Alex never feared anything. He took the oath of protecting those he loved seriously and watched out for our family every day. Even though Alex was the youngest, we always felt like he was our older brother because he took care of everything without hesitation. He always made us feel like everything was gonna be okay. We gather here today to mourn Alex's passing, our hero. He answered the call and served his community without question. Alex Hamsey dedicated his life to service and he died in the cause of this effort. On this difficult day and in this difficult time, we must ask ourselves what kind of community we are and what direction we want to move in. Considering the evidence, we can be filled with bitterness, hatred, and in, our, in a desire to take some type of revenge. Or we can make an effort to replace this violence and stain of bloodshed with compassion. We can make an effort to find the light amidst all of this darkness and sadness and move forward using love. Alex's love as our compass. Winston Churchill once said, I don't fear history because I intend to write it. Well, Alex, through your sacrifice, you have helped to write this moment in our history. A moment that we can only hope will define a brighter future. So through our tears, let us know the blessings of knowing and loving you, a great and noble man the best brother a sister could ever have. And now Mr. Jeff Scott, Alex's father-in-law. Thank you. I want to start by th thanking every one of you for being here. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much your love has helped us through this. There is no greater act of love that someone can give than to be willing to sacrifice their life for another human being, especially someone who hates and wishes them harm. Yet that is exactly what Alex, Dustin, and 99% of their brothers and sisters in blue do every day. Alex was not out there showing hate, power, or prejudice. Just his love for those he choose, chose to protect. I will never allow haters to ever portray him in any other way. We must shine the light on the charlatans who promote hate under the guise of victimhood and also condemn those who provide the platform for this evil. We are, as a nation, are tired of the vile rhetoric and false narrative. The good men and women in blue must endure every day. 
because the actions of a few. Let me repeat that, because of the actions of a few. I am sorry for my anger, but there is no hatred. When I saw the video of people celebrating the death of these two, I could have put hatred in my heart, but that makes them win. They will never win. As we brought back Alex's body to the funeral home in the SWAT vehicle that Alex loved, escorted by hundreds of men and women on the force, I could see the pain and anguish in their eyes. Even though Alex is my son-in-law, he was also their brother. And the pain they felt was just as deep as mine. As we passed countless people expressing their love, I tried to comfort them the best I could by letting them know how much they are loved and never, ever, ever forget how much they are loved. Now it's time for me to remind all of Alex's brothers and sisters in blue throughout the country that you are loved and I want you to never forget it. We may not express ourselves as much as those who show hate, but in our hearts, we are always with you. Don't for one moment think that we aren't with you 100%. And know we feel blessed by the unspoken sacrifice and love you show us every single day. One day, I sat down with Alex and grilled him with questions about his job that I was unaware of. Alex ended up giving me a lesson on exactly why the police take the actions that they do and enlightened me in doing so. The first thing I realized that the actions 99% of them make have nothing to do with prejudice or racism, or power trips, or hatred of, ma of minorities and immigrants, but a simple desire to protect themselves so they can make it back to their families at the end of the day. My son-in-law was about 15 minutes away from coming home before he died. Every officer knows their first duty is to protect us, but it's also their right to protect themselves. After Alex got done telling them about the danger they faced and what was needed to protect themselves, I asked him why the police didn't ask for an hour or so on national television to explain to the American people what he just taught me. Alex laughed and said that the media would never allow that to happen. Well, I am a stubborn son of a bitch, and we're going to make it happen. Why not give them the opportunity to have one hour, one hour on prime time television on all networks at the same time. Those of you who are, who are in the major networks, call me, call me. We're going to get this done. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge is a wonderful thing and we're going to provide it. This knowledge will hopefully spark the question, why is there so much hate in this country? We went from having differences to blatantly hating one another. This has to stop. It has to stop. 
blue. There is no need for blue to hate red or red to hate head blue. White to hate blacks or blacks to hate whites. We are one, one, one country. And we damn better bring it back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little upset. We have to stop believing this notion that our hatred of the other side is a good hatred. Think about that, a good hatred. Have we gone insane? Have we lost our minds? If we don't stop, we are going to lose our country. I lost my son-in-law. I don't want to lose my country too. This hatred of each other has got to stop. Please, 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 stop, stop, stop. We have to talk to one another. We have to love one another. It has to stop. Alex was love. When Alex was in your present, you could feel his love. Alex loved his wife, his sisters, his nephews, his family. Alex also loved his job and loved his life. Hatred should not have taken him away. This is the byproduct of hatred. And may I add, the burden of all this hatred falls on the men and women in blue. Never forget that. This nation can only survive as one. We will either lift each other up as one or we will perish. Thank you. Mr. Scott, in my faith tradition, there is an appropriate word, and that is amen. amen. And now from the DeMonte family and friends, first we'll be sharing Mark Ferguson, one of Dustin's friends. I wanted to first start by offering my condolences to the Hamsey family. Thank you all for being here today. And a special thank you to all police officers and first responders who have traveled from near and far to be with us. It's amazing to see so many people gather in one place to honor the lives of these incredible human beings. I'm sure they are looking over us now humbled by each person that has shown love, appreciation, and respect. I hope they feel the overwhelming outpouring of support the entire community has shown them and their families over the past week. My name is Mark Ferguson, and I've had the privilege of knowing Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte for over 20 years. To be honest, I never actually referred to him by his rank. For me, I did what I do with anyone I love. I invent silly nicknames that make no sense to anybody but the two of us. On any given day, he could have gone by dust, dusty, dust mop, trust, big country, and dust and Dunkin' Donuts to Monte. <laughs> We met how most kids do that are 11 or 12 years old in Middletown. Sharing middle school classes at Keglin, extracurricular activities like band, and playing organized sports. Eventually, this was a lot of pickup basketball and bowling. But in the beginning, it was mainly baseball. I have to be honest though, Dustin was the one actually playing baseball. I spent most games carving mini golf holes into the crush rock of the dugout and playing putt-putt with the other bench warmers. Dustin was the most pure soul from day one, unmistakably gentle. 
Like many of us here, I gravitated towards his friendship immediately. I would have never guessed all those years ago how remarkably consistent he would remain. The epitome of a friend. Selfless and relentlessly caring. There wasn't a single time he didn't ask me about how my wife was doing, what my parents were up to, and what chapter I was planning next in my life. He never talked about himself first, not because he wasn't proud of his family or his achievements, but because he genuinely wanted to know about mine. We experienced so many of life's biggest moments together. Graduating high school and college, starting careers, getting married, and having kids of our own. He so dearly loved his entire family. His wife, his kids, his parents, his siblings, his cousins, his in-laws. Of course, I can't really talk about Dustin and not mention his amazing wife, Laura. The love and happiness he found in Laura was something we talked about finding as teenagers. Hoping we would one day meet someone who had as much love to give as we did. I'm so glad he experienced a love like that. Man, did he deserve it. The banter between Dustin and Laura was so infectious and we always wanted to be around it. He loved when we were poking fun at each other. You couldn't fit a bigger smile on that bald head of his. Of course, he could never hide that smile when talking about his beautiful children, Phoebe and Porter. You could tell how proud he was to be a father. One of the hardest things is knowing that he won't be here to see what they become. But how can they not grow up to be incredible when he's such a deep part of them? He set an amazing example for me. And it's devastating that my children won't get to experience who Uncle does this. Brian, Dustin, and I had so much fun together. A lifetime of laughter and joy crammed into 20 years. We were never scared to be ourselves in front of Dustin, and we knew that we could always lean on him. He stayed true to himself. It would never change, no matter who he was around. He was our rock. He was his family's rock. He was everyone's rock. A constant force of good. The older I get, the more I understand and appreciate the importance friends have in my life. They are the people you choose to be around. We kept choosing Dustin, and he kept choosing us. He was the best. Dustin, your perfect family will be surrounded by our love. It's impossible for your memory to fade when you've left such a lasting impression on me. I love you, brother. I miss you already, and I look forward to one day seeing you again. Now another of Brian's precious friends, Brian Tenza, will come and share. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Tenza. I'd like to first begin by thanking Laura and the entire DeMonte family for allowing us this honor to speak on our best friend, Dustin. I'd also like to thank everyone who came out to show their support today and for the amazing acts of kindness and generosity shown this past week. 
I'd also like to extend my sincere condolences to the Hamsey family and to thank Officer Ayrado for what he did that night. To all the officers here today, thank you. It takes a special person to serve, and you do it day in and day out, putting your lives on the line to protect ours. I want you to know that we appreciate you, and what you do doesn't go unnoticed. Most of you here today know Dustin as Sergeant and now Lieutenant DeMonte, the hero. Mark and I are here to tell you a little bit about the Dustin we knew and grew up with. During my college years at UConn, I was a member of the grounds crew here at Rensselaer Field. The last time I was at the stadium, Mark and Dustin were in the stands right over there, pelting me with snowballs as I was trying to work. And I never thought the next time I stepped foot inside this field would be to say goodbye to our best friend. Before he transferred to Central Connecticut State University to pursue a criminology degree, Dustin and I were freshman year roommates at UConn. We practically invented YouTube in our dorm room, making music videos of each other, each other lip syncing and dancing. But Dustin and I met before college, long before college, and our friendship took root in the early days of backyard wiffle ball. It may not sound like anything to you, but to us, it was the major leagues. Back then, we'd post on our instant messengers, wiffle ball at Brian's. Soon, word would, word would spread, and Dustin was always one of the first to arrive. But this wasn't just wiffle ball. This was an event. We had lights, music, and I even put patterns in the grass like the pro fields even though Dustin would tease me for it. We would play until we were forced to shut the lights off. And if any of my old neighbors here today, apologies again for keeping you up late. As many of you know, Dustin loved baseball. He was a huge Yankee fan. Go Red Sox. <laughs> Dustin and I were members of the Middleton High School baseball team. Dustin played catcher, a perfect position for him because he could lead and direct others, something he continued to do throughout his life. Dustin was a big guy in high school, but his body matured faster than his voice. I can still hear that voice cracking as he yelled, two outs from behind home plate. Dustin was someone I felt comfortable going to with any problem, whether it be on the baseball field or in life a quality every good leader has. I was so impressed by Dustin's work ethic. The three of us could be hanging out until 10, 11 o'clock at night, but somehow Dustin woke up before the sun to open the Cromwell Dunkin' Donuts. Then Mark, what I would wander in later that day, while he was working, begging for free donuts, which he would never give us, because he was an honest guy. You could always trust the dust. He carried that work ethic into his career as a police officer, always striving to better himself for his family. I was a groomsman in Dustin's wedding, and he was excited to stand by my side on my wedding day next month. I was looking forward to seeing him and Mark on the dance floor doing the most ridiculous dance moves. Last month was my bachelor party up in Vermont. It centered around playing golf a sport Dustin did not play. He went out and bought his own version of golf attire, a full button-up shirt with bananas all over it, shin-high white crew socks, and a hat that read, have more fun. While warming up on the driving range, Mark attempted to instruct Dustin on how to hit a golf ball, which ultimately resulted in a very large divot and the driver head going much further than the ball itself. I can still hear the cheers from his group through the trees anytime he made solid contact, followed by an immediate four as the ball sailed into an adjacent group on another hole. 
That morning, I sat with Dustin on the porch discussing how things were going with my wedding planning in the military, his kids and his job. A pretty simple conversation. If I could go back on that porch again, I'd tell him how proud I am of him and the extraordinary life he's built. How I look up to him as a role model, a husband, and a service member. I think he wore, excuse me, I think the hat he wore that weekend is a great reminder of how he'd want us all to live our lives from here on out. Tell your family you love them more often. Cherish the moments, big and small, and very simply, have more fun. As an Air Force officer and pilot, Dustin and I would have conversations centered around service. Dustin loved being a police officer. He was drawn to the Brotherhood, cared about his community, and genuinely wanted to make a difference in people's lives. That's exactly what he did. He put service before self. The Bible says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Dustin, we're not sure where to go from here without you. But please know, Laura and all your children will be looked after. Phoebe and Porter will hear all of these stories one day and know what amazing man their father was. I love you and I'll miss you. Thank you. Zachary Levine is now scheduled to speak. If he would make his way up. Good afternoon. My name is Zach Levine. I've been a coworker and friend of Lieutenant DeMontis since the start of my career nearly a decade ago. To stand before you and speak about this exceptional man is an absolute honor. For those of you who did not know him, Dustin was the best of the best. He was the most honest, kind, sincere person that you could have ever met. He genuinely cared about every person that he came across. Civilians, students, family, friends, and strangers. Over the last few days, many of us have been talking about the wonderful memories we have of Dustin, ones that have made us laugh even in this dark time. So I'm here to share a couple of those stories with you in the hopes that they will highlight the kind of person that Dustin was and maybe even make you smile, because that's what Dustin would have wanted us to do. Dustin loved to dance, and he was great at it. In fact, Dustin and Laura had one of the most epic wedding entrances to date. Their wedding was beautiful, and the bridal party came out one by one. Laura and Dustin broke through the doors looking so elegant. They made their way to the dance floor, hugging and kissing, and then the beat dropped. The two of them broke into a well-choreographed dance that included the whip nene and a very well-done stanky leg by Dustin. 
Then there was the Kitcher wedding, where he made his entrance, entrance, I'm sorry, as a groomsman and convinced one of the bridesmaids to twerk. They nailed it. The bridesmaid gave up after a few seconds and walked off to join the rest of the bridal party. Meanwhile, Dustin waited for the peak moment of the song and then continued to twerk very well, I might add, in the middle of the dance floor, alone, for a very uncomfortably long period of time. <laughs> the next story was one that I wasn't present for and only heard about, but it's worth sharing for no better reason than it is funny. While Dustin was on field training, he was working third shift, and he brought in an arrestee who, let's say, was uncooperative. He was a spitter. Dustin was instructed to go to the supply room and get a spit mask. He always listened to his superior officers and did exactly as he was told. When Dustin returned, he had the spit mask securely placed upon his own head so that when the arrestee spat, it wouldn't get in his mouth or eyes. He learned that night that spit masks are to be placed on the person doing the spitting, not on the police officer. And while I'm sure it was reflected in his daily report, he never made that mistake again. Finally, I'd like to tell two quick stories about Dustin and his wonderful way with animals. The first story is about a cat named Garfield who wore a leash and lived in Grand Central Station with his owner. During one Christmas season, Dustin, Laura, and a few of us took the train into New York City. At the end of the night, we got back to Grand Central and Dustin decided we needed to stop to get baked goods for the train ride home. When his owner, I'm sorry, while ordering, Dustin was behind Garfield's owner and was unknowingly stepping on his leash. When his owner started walking, the leash pulled and the cat let out a howl and his owner angrily turned around and began accusing Dustin of trying to kill her cat, causing quite the scene. Laura and the other girls came aggressively flying over to Dustin's defense and the New York City Transit Police ended up in the mix. In true Dustin fashion, he coolly and calmly explained to the woman that he would never try to kill her cat and that the whole situation was just a misunderstanding. Just another example of Dustin being Dustin, handling any situation with grace and tact. The second story about Dustin and animals involves a rather large dog. During a call, Dustin and I got sent to serve a warrant. As we walked to the, tour, the door, I told Dustin that there was a really, really, really big dog that lived there and that he wasn't friendly. When we spoke with the resident, I inquired about the dog's whereabouts and she told me that he was in the bathroom. As we breathed a sigh of relief, we suddenly heard a growl and saw a dog that looked like a lion coming from around the corner of the house. He wasn't in the bathroom, he was going to the bathroom. The dog came barreling for us and Dustin ran right inside and shut the door behind him, leaving me on the porch alone. The dog latched onto my left arm. Once all was under control, Dustin grabbed me by the collar and pulled me inside. I began screaming on the radio that I needed an ambulance to respond, lights and sirens. I told Dustin that I needed him to check my wounds because I couldn't look. Being the friend that he was, he jumped right into action. He rolled up my sleeve, inspected my arm carefully, and calmly explained that there was nothing, not a single scratch. The dog didn't even break my skin. He never let me live that one down, and I never held a door for him again. <laughs> Through these stories, I hope that I was able to highlight the kind of person that Dustin was. He was an amazing police officer, but there was no role that he loved more than being a husband and father. Laura, he loved you. Phoebe and Porter deeply. He was proud to call you his, and he was thrilled to be having a third child with you. I'll never forget the smile on his face when he told me that you were expecting number three. He may be gone from this earth, but he is always with you. He will live on in all of us forever. Each Bristol police officer gained two guardian angels on October 12th, 
and the world lost two of the best men it's ever known. Rest easy, Lieutenant DeMonte and Sergeant Hamsey. We'll take it from here. Laura, would you like to come and say a few words? As she's coming, she has asked that this Irish sentiment be shared, and so Pastor Alley is going to come and share. Death is nothing at all. I have slipped away into the next room. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak to me the easy way which you always used to. Laugh as we always laugh together. Play, smile. Think of me, pray for me. Let my name be the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effort. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is absolutely unbroken continuity. Why should I be out of your mind? Because I am out of your sight. I am but waiting for you for an interval, somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well. Nothing is past, nothing is lost. One brief moment and all will be as it was before, only better, infinitely happier, and forever we'll be one together in Christ. To Alex and Dustin, you are both true heroes amazing people, and you will be missed beyond words by everyone. I am so sorry this happened to, to you. Two of the very best humans, so kind, positive, and fun-loving. Dustin, my love, babe. Pain in the butt. The kids and I are honored to call you ours. You loved us so hard, and we felt that love every single day. I know you felt that love in return. I remember thinking while we were at the beach, the park, the store, on a walk, playing outside in our yard, or just sitting on the couch, really anywhere, that this is the best life can ever get, that my heart is just so happy, and there couldn't have been truer words. Our family was as close to perfect as could be, because we had you. You made everything better. Thank you for these beautiful children, wonderful memories that we will cherish forever, an amazing life, and the deepest, purest, most special love that I have ever felt. <laughs> We love you so very much. You will always be our hero and our angel. Please stay with us always. These kiddos and I will keep dancing with you, for you, forever. Thank you all for being here today and the support you have shown. To all the officers out there, please be safe and stay strong. Things need to change out there, and I'm confident that Alex 
and Dustin are doing all they can up there to make sure that happens. Thank you. Please remain standing as I close this portion in prayer. Father, again, you know the horror, the anguish, and the pain. We, we look to you right now. Father, I ask that you would put your hand on these two precious families. Help them to feel your support, your sustenance, your peace, your comfort. Help them to re realize that they are not alone from this point forward. And Father, for the lives of these two incredible human beings, we ask that you would inspire us to follow their example. We understand that no sacrifice is ever wasted. And Father, we look to you to accomplish good out of this. We know it was senseless, but we ask that you would take it and make it useful for your purposes. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In accordance with the highest level of traditional law enforcement customs and courtesies to include the firing party, the ceremony is now being returned to Connecticut State Police. The Honor Guard Unit Commander, Sergeant Casimira Morse. Detail, attend, who? Cover two. Color Guard details, carry colors. First load of 245, Sergeant Hamsey. First load of 245, Sergeant Hamsey. First load of all units be advised, this is the final call for Sergeant Alex Hamsey, badge number 245. On Wednesday, October 12th, 2022, Sergeant Hamsey bravely gave his life for his brothers and sisters in blue. Your courage and sacrifice will never be forgotten. You dedicated yourself to protect and serve Bristol and are the true definition of the word hero. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Alex was a friend to all. His larger than life personality, infectious laughter, and bright smile filled our hallways and graced our community for the last eight years. You were a gentle soul and a kind spirit. You'll be missed more than words can say. We all mourn your loss. The wicked flee when no one pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. This is the end of watch for our brother, Sergeant Alex Hamsey, badge number 245, your final 1010. Rest in eternal paradise, brave warrior. We'll take it from here.
All units, stand by for priority dispatch. Bristol to 221, Lieutenant DeMonte. Bristol to 221, Lieutenant DeMonte. This is the final call for Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte, badge number 221. On October 12, 2022, you bravely laid your life on the line to protect your brothers and sisters in blue. Lieutenant Samadhi, you demonstrated commitment, professionalism, and dedication every moment of every day. You probably wore the badge as a warrior for this community. On behalf of the Bristol, Connecticut Police Department, we thank you for your 10 years of service. Your ultimate sacrifice will never be forgotten. We promise to carry on your legacy as you deserve. You are and always will be greatly missed. Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte, 221, this is the end of your watch. May you rest in peace. You are 1010 for the final time. We've got the watch from here. Present arms.
can see a sea of officers there as the bodies of uh, Sergeant Hamsey and Lieutenant DeMonte are making their way out of Rentschler Field. Uh, leading up to this funeral, uh, it was our goal to try to salute these people, not just as officers, but as the full people they were, husbands, fathers, friends. We did so as best we could, but of course we couldn't do it nearly as good as the ones who loved them could. And that, I think, is the single biggest takeaway we got from this beautiful service. We got to get a fuller picture of who they were and how badly, deeply, terribly they're going to be missed. So many heartfelt stories from sisters, wives, and also we had some really amusing, funny stories, which was nice to break up the really emotional part of the, and, and the sadness, but to have a chuckle here and there with some of the stories from some of their friends. And I think when we think about generosity of spirit right off the top of this ceremony today, both of these families were thanked for their willingness to share this experience mm -hmm with our community. Yes. Uh, nobody would have, would have held it against them if all of this was kept private. Uh, they were thanked for sharing that experience and there was one moving moment to the next. I mean, yeah. Alex Hamsey's parents or father got up there and he said, if we are known for the rest of our lives as Alex's, mm -hmm. Alex Hamsey's parents, it would be the highest honor we could ever achieve. Yeah, well. Let's get out to Fox 61's Jim Altman. He is outside Rentschler Field right now with more on the sights and sounds. Jimmy. And as you join us out here live, uh, we are just outside of the stadium. As you can see, the motorcycle pr procession, Tim and Keith, is just about ready to leave. One of these groups will head to North Haven. The other group of motorcycles will head to Terryville. That is for both officers. The procession now, as you see it live, they are headed to different points, one point near Bristol and one point near, well, in North Haven. It's amazing to see just how many different agencies were here just on the, on the motorcycle brigade alone. I counted 30 motorcycles just from the New York Police Department. You can see now we have a hearse going by us and both bodies will be taken till their final resting places. I would think that you could put two words to this day. It would be poignant and it would be powerful. You can watch some of these pictures in front of us as we watch some of the police officers now coming out. These are the Bristol police officers now emerging from Rentschler Field after a very somber day, but a very, well, a very, a day full of a lot of strength. As we watch these, uh, the final part of the motorcade head onto the streets of East Hartford and then to escort both officers to their final resting places. Uh, a sad day, but a very powerful day. And we spoke to so many people from all over the country who came in just to, uh, just to so show their support. We'll have more on that at both 5 and 6 on the Fox 61 News. But for now, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Jimmy, thank you. You just quoted that really emotional sound from, uh, honestly, I, I, it's escaped me who it was. Uh, Alex, Alex Hensley's Hensley's father, father saying that if being his parents were how they are known for the rest of their lives, that it would be the greatest honor, honor of their lives. And, and go ahead, I'm sorry. And I was just going to say, it was that actual moment that really hit for me. That was yeah. just right, an incredible it, I believe we have that moment. for you. If we don't stop, we are going to lose our country. I lost my son-in-law. I don't want to lose my country, too. This hatred of each other has got to stop. Please, 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 stop, stop, stop. We have to talk to one another. We have to love one another. It has to stop. Alex was love. When Alex was in your present, you could feel his love. 
Alex loved his wife, his sisters, his nephews, his family. Alex also loved his job and loved his life. Hatred should not have taken him away. This is the byproduct of hatred. And may I add, the burden of all this hatred falls on the men and women in blue. Never forget that. This nation can only survive as one. We will either lift each other up as one or we will perish. Thank you. Well, that was not Sergeant Hamzy's father. That was his father-in-law. Yeah, we wanted Scott. to clarify that. We also have some clips of the sound bites from both of their wives. There are not enough words for me to describe my love for Alex. So instead of trying to find the right words to say, I'm going to read you all a quote. I came across this when Alex first became a police officer. And now that Alex has passed, it speaks to me more than ever. When I see his badge, it is not just a number. It signifies honor, and it has my ultimate respect. His badge that I proudly stand behind lies upon his chest, close to his heart, because this call on his life as an officer takes heart. So while you may know my officer as a number, no, he is far more than that. He is my hero, my protection, the love of my life, and of course, my heart. I love you, Alex. Good, good, okay. To Alex and Dustin, you are both true heroes. Amazing people, and you will be missed beyond words by everyone. I am so sorry this happened to, to you. Two of the very best humans, so kind, positive, and fun loving. Dustin, my love, babe. Pain in the butt. The kids and I are honored to call you ours. You loved us so hard, and we felt that love every single day. I know you felt that love in return. I remember thinking while we were at the beach, the park, the store, on a walk, playing outside in our yard, or just sitting on the couch, really anywhere, that this is the best life can ever get, that my heart is just so happy, and there couldn't have been truer words. Our family was as close to perfect as could be because we had you. You made everything better. Thank you for these beautiful children, wonderful memories that we will cherish forever, an amazing life, and the deepest, purest, most special love that I have ever felt. <laughs> We love you so very much. You will always be our hero and our angel. Please stay with us always. These kiddos and I will keep dancing with you, for you, forever. Thank you all for being here today and the support you have shown. To all the officers out there, please be safe and stay strong. Things need to change out there, and I'm confident that Alex and Dustin are doing all they can up there to make sure that happens. Thank you. Now, Jimmy Altman mentioned one of the 
takeaways from today with strength. I don't know how those two wives, uh, mm. Katie Hamsey and, and uh, Laura DeMonte, were able to do that. When Laura was getting the American flag with her daughter's hand on her shoulder, it was almost too much for us to bear right. up here. I can't imagine actually having gone through it. Her composure and the way yeah. she was still able to speak is just incredible. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna go now to Tony Terzi. He's out there live with a little bit more perspective. Guys, we're uh, live outside the Bristol Police Department where the memorial seems to be growing uh, by the day. You know, we had one woman come by on her bike earlier and she says, you know what this reminds me of? About 25 years ago when Princess Diana was killed in that car crash, she said there was this long line of a memorial that seemed to go on. And she said, well, this line isn't a long line of flowers and such. It just seems to be so much love. And there is a statue that came yesterday to this memorial, the statue of St. Michael, who to Catholics is known as the patron saint of law enforcement, among other things. Uh, that is here on the site. Pictures, messages written on that police cruiser that's buried beneath flowers right now. This morning, when we were in North Haven, when I spoke to you guys several hours ago, we spoke to a woman who was wearing a back the blue sweatshirt standing on the sidewalk, found out she was the wife of a Bridgeport police officer. And she said, you know, I've, I've always known that if you are with a man of the badge, you too, as a spouse, you marry the badge. And that can be tough at times. And she said she and her husband knew the DeMontes, not well, but lived near them in North Haven. And the way she described Dustin was a kind man, which is all you ever heard about him. He was a very big man, uh, kind of like our Tim Lammers. And he was a guy who friends would try to get to play football in high school because he was a big guy, didn't want anything to do with it. He was a good baseball player, but he played in the school band and he was one who always tried the instruments, different instruments, and always was very helpful. And one of his former coaches in middle school said, he's not surprised at all because of his nature that he became a police officer. Tim and Erica, back to you. Tony, thank you. And we want to thank you for joining us here on Fox 61 as we honor the fallen officers from the Bristol Police Department. Thank you. Thank you for joining us with uh, a lot of what people out there had to say. Of course, you can join us this evening on the Fox 61 News at 5 and 6 p.m. And you can always get the latest on Fox61.com, the Fox 61 app, and streaming live on Fox 61 Plus. Have a good day. In speaking with Alex and Dustin's families, it was evident to me that they wanted everyone to know how much they loved their families, how much they loved being Bristol police officers, how much they loved serving the community of Bristol, and how much they loved the department and everyone in it. Time and time again, they would make this very clear to me, and I assured them that I would make this very clear to all of you. Today, we will grieve together. We will cry for one another because that's who we are. We will cry together for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty because that's who we are. We will cry together for Dustin and Alex because we will miss them terribly.